paradigm of absolute control. And that's why we're just out here doing simple things, pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural. And this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. And that's why they want to try to keep us out of it. I'm angry. I've had enough of these people. Little bones of Christian murderers gone. They're on giant death factories keeping babies alive. They're selling their body parts. What more do you need to know about these people? I go out and face this scum They literally crawl out from under rocks They have green looking skin And they run around screaming We love Satan, we wanna eat babies I have them on video Hillary's in the creepy weird six of man Sleeps in the same room with that creepy weirdo woman whose mother wears a hood over her head. What the hell? That woman number one is ugly. Imagine how bad she smells, man. I'm told her and Obama just stink. Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. Fire pot, then the goblins are hobbling round, coming after us. My spirit gets close to that evil, and I feel it go. Ah, ah, ah. We're such self centered crap, we don't even know this hand itself rising up against us. Millions of pointed people of the very worst type, and I'm so pissed. Gonna steal your daughter at the mall. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna steal your wife, your son. Ooh. We're gonna stab you with a butcher knife. And then the police chief is gonna say, We love our Somalis. We love our Muslims. Oh, they're so good. Oh, they're so sweet. I doubt it, y'all. How you guys doing? We got 200 people already. How you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing really, really well. Because I'm doing extremely well. Now, I am stressed to the damn gills. Stressed to the damn gills, boys. You see my gills? They're on my forehead, actually. My gills are. But <laughs> I'm stressed, man. And I hope the chat's ready to join me in my stress. We're talking about Asmongold Gold today. Because Asma Gold made some dumbass statements, and the last stream we had was huge when we were roasting him a little, and then he follows it up with even worse shit. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go through it tonight. It's gonna change your life, boys. It's it's pretty bro, it's rough, it's rough. But other than that, we got a lot to talk about, and we got some stuff to talk about racing wise. We got all the things lined up today, so make sure you're ready. Make sure you're locked to stream and whatnot, because this is my life, man. I'm cle clearing my deviated septum, but God, by the way. Everybody's like, do you do cocaine? I'm like, I am not 90 pounds. Okay, let me let me fill this in for you guys <laughs> that have never liked partied in your life. People that do cocaine every day become like skeletal. 
They don't stay like this. Okay? It's not how this works. All right? Deviate a step. I do that like every five seconds. You'll see it all the time. Not cocaine. Also, I race a NASCAR. Drug test. Can't do cocaine, you goofy bastard. Anyways, so um, that being said, um, real quick, this is the last stream. Ooh. It is the last stream before I print off the sponsorship for Phoenix. If you guys aren't aware, I'm racing the Arkham Menard Series race in Phoenix, March 8th. So don't forget about that. Uh, it's going to be on Fox Sports 1, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So don't miss that. It's my first ever race uh, in like NASCAR. So I'm very excited. I um, never thought I'd ever be here, but we're doing it. And uh, it's the help of all you guys. So that being said, last stream, every single Red Boy, which is a $100 Super Chat or more, will be on the Phoenix car. We have 20 names on there now, along with the Daytonas that are rolling over. So don't forget, somebody even put Doki Bird on there, which is hilarious. Um, so yes, going to be very, very cool. So don't miss out. It's going to be awesome. We're up against 277th Naked Snake in a row. Billy Hatcher says, I'm not surprised as my goal is mad about being called out. Melanie Matt got banned on uh, Twitch for what she said a few days ago on Twitter. For what she says on Twitter. It's crazy, isn't it? It's like that guy that copyright striked my channel because of what I posted on Twitter. Google doesn't own Twitter or X and vice versa, but journalists are borderline retarded. So that's just how this works. What's up, Flux? How you doing? Oh, my God. Uh, but thank you, Billy Hatcher. I love you. All right, cool. So thank you, buddy. Thank you for your first Orange Boy today. The old man coming to good luck in Phoenix. Thank you, my friend. So we're going to be, oh, thanks for the four months, by the way. We're going to be going hard today. So I hope you guys are ready. I love you, and I appreciate you. I'm going to talk to Chad a little bit, and then we're going to get right into the spicy spice. It is an hour-long video of Asthma Gold, and he says some pretty heinous shit in this video. And it just makes me, it just confuses me. And the reason I say this is, I have watched creators. I have watched creators go from... 10k subs right and i was friends with them i talked to them regularly and then they went to like 500k or 800k or over a million and they be they completely change not all of them obviously but they completely they become celebrity status they become really egotistical they won't talk to normal people anymore they won't that you're not allowed to go to their events like it's very fucking weird um it's uh something i've dealt with very recently um, where just you're not allowed to do certain things. You're not allowed to talk to certain people anymore because they're celebrities now. Even though all they do is stream and put out fucking videos on YouTube, but now they're celebrities. So you can't talk to them anymore. It's freaking weird, man. As a normal-ass dude who's had moderate su success on, on con in content creation, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I've seen it happen as low as 100K subs. Keep in mind... I am the 25th highest paid YouTuber on, in America. A lot of people don't realize this. My trailer park ass. 25th, 24th by tomorrow probably. So I, I understand all the aspects around this. And yes, that's pretty badass. My dumb ass. Pretty cool. But <laughs> never thought that would happen. Um, but it's because of you guys, obviously. It's not because of freaking ad revenue. But I've seen people... That they they just they just become fucking celebrities, man. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna look back on this. You're gonna look back on this in a year or two, or three, or four, or five, and you're gonna be like, wow, that was cringe. I was I acted like a a snub a smug celebrity for like a couple years back then. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, I'm not gonna give any. I'm not gonna give any specifics because. I'm still cool with a lot of people that are. It's, it's so many, so much shits entwined, man. Tide C says, "I'm sorry, I can't do Red Boy having foreclosure and brace for impact." Thank you for all the content. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Don't don't super chat me if you're in foreclosure, you goofy bastard. What are you doing? I appreciate that, but hey, man, save the green boys, man. Save them. Save yourself. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. I hope everything goes well. And if in a year or two, it won't. You it won't. 
it won't be dark. You know what I'm saying? Revenge says, morons hate Melanie Mac. Take Asmund Gold, for example. Yeah, I love Melanie. She's funny. <laughs> I've, in real life, and never, she's funny. I like her. So, A.M. Harbinger says, where's the copy of Metal Gear Solid 3? Is this the, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. There you go. I have it. It's right here. <laughs> Very specific, but yes, I do have that. All right, boys. All right. So, um, anyways, a lot of stuff going on in my life that's very annoying, but also a lot of stuff going on that is very, very cool. It's very, very cool. Uh, racing, it's going to be awesome. Um, I had a very last minute possible sponsor jump on um, because I had a little bit of, uh, I don't know, something fall through, I think. Um, ah, Jesus. Um, anyways, but yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Very exciting. So I'm excited, man. What's up, M Mr. VM? What's up, Camelot's Goomba? How you doing, baby? Flux. Simon, Steph, how you guys doing? Um, which people have you you haven't had Melanie in your stream in a while? Yeah, I need to message her. I gotta be honest, I don't know if it's Twitter or what, but uh I no one responds to me on Twitter, man. It used to be like clockwork, but now no one responds on Twitter. And I don't think it's anything to do with anybody. I just think that no one responds anymore. Like, no one reads that shit anymore. I don't know. I really can't tell you. So, uh, yeah, I reach out to people all the time. Sometimes they respond. Sometimes they don't. It's weird. I'll have people say, uh, I'll be like, hey, you, you should come on my show, like, in the next couple weeks. And they're like, yeah, dude, that sounds great. And I'm like, awesome. And then they, uh, I'm like, what about Wednesday? And then they never say anything. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I guess we're not doing that. You know, so. Oh, my God. I'm currently in like a weird like Twitter spat. It's not really a Twitter spat. It's just more of a conversation. But I'm like providing U.S. Census stats on Twitter to this person, and they're like just ignoring them and saying, but how and why are this, this? And I'm like, bro, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to fucking do. Marty Gunn says, are you still racing in Arca? Uh, March 8th, we're racing at Phoenix. Phoenix, Marty. Phoenix. Thank you. Appreciate you. Trent Westbrook, bro, what's up, my friend? How you doing, dude? Trent Westbrook coming in with the orange boy. I appreciate you. I hope you're doing well, my buddy. I love you. I appreciate you. You're my boy. You're my boy. 20. 20 red boys so far on the car for Phoenix. This is the last possible stream to do so. I don't know if I'll do it for Talladega and Dover. I have to check with the team because I'll be doing a different, like, I'm going to be going hard as hell. I'm going to be going really hard the next two races after this because uh, it's Cyber Frog and I have funding to do some big shit. So we'll see. I don't know if the team will allow me to do that, but you know, we're going to see. Thank you, Tricky. I love you. Thank you. Call me goaded. Um, do you know Amber Balkan? I grew up with her. Saw her dad a while ago. No. Um, I see her walking around doing like videos, like staged videos and photo shoots in the garage. I don't, I'd never see her otherwise. <laughs> like i think she, she'll come out of her hauler and then she'll like do videos where she's like standing by her car and like looking at it and then she'll go back to her hauler she has like a whole film crew with her um yeah i think she's a i would probably wait until i was like in the xfinity series or something to be like i'm a celebrity bro celebrity status bro i would like, wait till you're like way up there before you, <laughs> i don't know shit i don't know what i what do i know i'm just a normal ass dude to be honest uh, maybe that is the right thing to do. I don't know. It just, I'm like, dude, it's Arca. And I mean, this is a big deal for me. Yeah, it's changed. But that, you know, I'm a, a trailer park guy. So you still coming to Scotland later this year? I hope so. Um, So we'll see. We'll see. Oh my God. It's going to be awesome, man. Mm -mm -mm. Can't I, say, I can't, can't wait, man. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. Ethan said he was good with the names. What are you talking about? Cody hates Carlos. Agreed. <laughs> are you out of curiosity? Are there any other streamer YouTubers that race in Arca or NASCAR? Not that I know of. See, I've had talks with people in the past that like focus on racing content, and I've tried to like bring them in to the the racing world. It's the freaking weirdest thing in the world. I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. And nothing against anybody, obviously, but uh. I can't, my 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 perspective is 
very skewed, right? So all I want to do is race. That is all I want to do at all. Nothing else. Like I want to race. Now, obviously I want to stream and shit, but I'm talking about like, I want to race. So everything I do is like thinking about working towards the next race. And I know like, you know, NASCAR YouTubers, I'm like, bro, you should come like drive a car. I got, fuck, we got a car. Let's drive, let's, let's make a video and let's get you in a car and you know, instead of just playing like a video game, um, like your content, let's put you in a real car and let's see what happens. And none of them want to do it. Zero want to do it. They are like, no. Nah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like that dude, if somebody messaged me and said, hey, bro, we're going to be at this track. We want you to stop by and fucking jump in this car and give it a few laps. Since like, you know, you, this is, you want to do some content, like experience our car and see what it's like. And they're always like, no. Nah. I'm like, what? Dude, if somebody would have messaged my ass and said that shit like a couple years ago, I'd have been like, bro, I'm on my way. You know, it's crazy. It's really weird. I don't know, man. I, I like, I'm just saying my perspective skew because it's all I thought about my whole life, you know? So they worried about safety. No, those cars are the safest things in the world, bro. Pay below. You can, you can flip those cars going 200 miles an hour. You're not gonna get hurt. I've hit a wall. I've hit a wall going hundred. I've ha I've had a guy hit me going 120 when I was stopped and I flipped <laughs> and I was barely, I, I, I had like a little bit of like soreness in my midsection, you know, um, rabbit in the hole says, get out racing, let's race. I have out racing. I just don't, I don't really, I don't really want to, I don't know. Like, I don't really care for out racing. Um, it's cool and all, but it is very detrimental to real racing. That's why I don't like to do it. Um, if I'm looking for a track layout, I'll pull up a test session and like look at a track layout and kind of get my idea for breaking points. Other than that, it's, it'll just make your driving worse. Um, from my experience, because it's not, it's not similar at all, not even kind of similar. So, uh, it's, it's, it's more hurt. It hurts more than it helps in my opinion. So, <laughs> Okay. Anyways, boys, sorry guys. I've been I've been rambling. I'm trying to, you know, it's one of those streams, guys, where I'm just I'm really worn out and tired and trying to survive. And uh, I gotta fly tomorrow morning to West Virginia to Tim Pool's compound. And then right when I get home, like a day later, I have to fly to Phoenix for the race. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna not be streaming for a minute, and that's gonna destroy me like financially. <laughs> Whoa, what was me? What was me? All right. Um, but that's just how life is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I hope so, Saul. I hope so. Th thank, please, God. Um, those cars have gotten a lot safer since Rich, Rich Pretty Days. No one's died in NASCAR, uh, any NASCAR owned division since 2001. Earnhardt was the last one, man. You know? So we're going to find out, man. So much flying. It's terrible, Flux. Um, I also don't really care for flying, but I will not drive. I'm not going to drive 20 hours. I hate that shit. So, um, look at leave a, leave up a J Christmas stream so we can donate. Nah, it's all good. It's all good, man. I'll make it work. Um, that was the last one. Yep. <clears throat> and he was, Earnhardt was a goober. I love him obviously, but he was a goober. He didn't wear a Hans device, um, which was like the latest and greatest thing, right? And he like loosened his belts. He was notorious for loosening his belts at the end of races to prepare for the end. Um, so like he died so hard and instantly because he barely hit the wall, but like the the force pushed him. Dude, his face hit the steering wheel and like broke it in half. Whereas if he had a Hans device on, that would have never happened. But that's life. That's why NASCAR uh, mandated it right after that. Very, I, I wear one. I wear a, a, pro, a pro ultra Hans device in racing. It's mandatory in NASCAR. So didn't Tony two Stewart kill a dude? Not in NASCAR. That was like a random dirt race or outlaw race or something. And it's not, he didn't murder a guy. The guy got out of his car, which is against the rules and then ran on track, which is against the rules. And then you can't see in these cars, nothing. All you see is like this, this much POV. So if a dude runs out to the front left of your car, and like gets close to it, and you're coming around, dude. If you hit that dude, he's dead. And that's what happened. It's open wheel cars, giant wheels, fucking hit him, killed him. You know, couldn't do nothing about it. Couldn't do nothing about it, boys. That's just how that works. Ooh. 
think all kinds of racing demand them. Yep, they should be used. You should use a Hans device on in every t- form of racing, other than like motorcycle racing. And they have like a built-in kind of one. That shoulder bump that goes like right to the back of their head. So you gotta wear them, man. You gotta wear them. Um, but hey, everybody does now, so <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Pyramid Seven, what's up? But by the way, we're drinking the monster. Okay, I'm just going to talk to the chat a little bit, and then we're going to go into this uh, EFAP session. Um, been really, really cool. By the way, we're almost at $119,000 for our Indiegogo campaign for the Cyberfrog car. We killed it. There are still some signed cars left, so make sure you give it some love. Um, somebody, one of the mods, well, I don't even think I have any mods in the chat right now, which is weird. But I guess my mods all like d- d- died today. Here you go. <laughs> Here's the link. There you go, boys. Um, and that is for the Cyberfrog car, which will be a full wrap at Talladega and Dover. $118,000 going crazy. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Been awesome. Thank you guys. That'll cover uh, two, almost three races. Um, I'm trying to work out like a deal with a team to like somehow s- slide in with three races. Oh, Sky Takes. Bitch, Sky Takes, you, you said something like an hour ago. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. Bitch, I can't see that. I just noticed that you talked like 30 minutes ago. All right, boys. We're, t- we're a tenth of the way to Naked Snake. It's been a lot of fun. Um, let's talk about some Asmon Gold. So if you guys don't remember Asmon Gold the other day, um, decided it would be a good idea. Now, look, regardless, absolutely regardless of what Hassan Piker says, even if it's something that's like legit, I would just say I'm going to disagree with it because he sucks. Hassan Piker is a pile of shit. Hassan Piker is like the like the Paul brothers in my eyes disingenuous fake all bullshit money hungry psycho narcissist that's what they are and they man it's not necessarily a bad thing for them because they're doing really well but I don't really care for disingenuous people it's not what I'm into I don't like that um it's I don't want like I'm not gonna slap them although Hassan needs to be slapped for sure but I don't care to be around disingenuous people because it's very awkward and it's not, it feels gross. You know, it, you can, you can almost feel the manipulation. <laughs> you know, you can feel them inside your skin trying to manipulate your ass. There's something about it, man. You can feel it. And maybe some people can't. I, dude, I've been around people. Shit, there's creators. There is creators out there that make gajillions of dollars. And they are, they'll like make an announcement video or stream or something. And they are, they, they're like reading a script and it's the most fakest disingenuous bullshit I've ever seen. And people are like, wow, in the chat. Wow. It's so great. I'm like, Oh my God, this dude's fucking lying to you. He's not a good liar. Like that's when you know, you got some hot shit is when you're a manipulator, a liar, disingenuous, and you're good at it. <laughs> like then you can roll the damn world. That's when you become a politician. Um, but anyways, some people are bad at it and they and their their audience can't pick up on it, which is spooky. It's very spooky. And I've had friends that are dating girls or guys, you know, vice versa, female friend, male friend. And I'm like, oh, this person you're dating is terrible. They are a, they're awful. They are not a real person. And they can't see it. They're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, what do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? And then six months later, they found out they were getting cheated on the whole time. I'm like, no, no shit. Everybody said this. Where were you? I was blinded because she had labias. Stop looking at the labias. They're just labias, bro. Every woman has two, usually. Or four. There's like two. There's four of them. <laughs> I think. Flux, help me out. Uh, K-, K to the Swiss. <laughs> $5 super chat. Thank you, K to the Swiss. I love you, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Helping us get to the 277th Naked Snake. Am I right? Yeah. Anyways. Well, Mr. Mist, let's be honest here for a second. Where are you at, buddy? Says Asmon Gold is stuck in the streamer friend bubble. Hell, I think one of his uh I think his one friend that wasn't a streamer became a streamer. So yeah, look. There is a subset of streamers that are hyper successful that will con- completely they'll completely defend every other per for example, um uh, Ludwig and Hassan. I know they're, I think they're friends. I, now, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure they're friends. How you could be friends with Hassan un, un, unironically, I don't know. But they will defend each other. 
Asmongold apparently is defending Hassan for some reason, and they're all in this streamer bubble. It's very spooky. It's very creepy. Um, and I'll call people out immediately. Now, look, that being said, I've done that in the past, and it has fucked me hard. And that's life. I can't collab with a lot of people because I've probably offended one person in like this large spectrum, and now no one talks to me from that spectrum. Just how it is sometimes, man. Um, but I'm not afraid to say some shit. Because, again, I'm not going to be disingenuous and not transparent to the people watching me. I'm just not. It's not how I'm built. And if that burns a bridge or two to, like... Because there's a lot of people out there that are part of these huge communities. And there's, like, two or three people in these communities that are hyper, like, hyper dangerous. Um, and we'll probably find out in a couple years. But hyper dangerous, disingenuous, liars, but... The rest of the group is terrified to fucking offend somebody or say something because they don't want their group to break down nor uh, attract any drama. It's going to be unavoidable eventually. But don't say I didn't told you so. But yeah, um, I don't really understand that. Like my, a lot of my friends are streamers, um, but I also have like, like a, a couple, a handful of friends in real life. Shit, the all the people that came to Daytona, aside from Karis. All the people that came to Daytona were like real friends. And Karis is a real I don't Karis is a real friend, but you know what I'm saying. I met him through online. Um, silent RPG Lord. Hassan will show Palestine, but fails to realize his views will get him ended in their hands down. Yeah, 100 percent That's one weird ass thing. That's one very, very strange ass thing. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Silent RPG. Uh, look, I'm not gonna derail the stream, uh, but like LGBTQ like people that are like Palestine for Palestine. Like I'm like, are you what? What are you? That, that's like diabetes. That's like the Dile Diabetes Coalition of America uh being in support of like original Coke. I don't know. Like it's weird. Coke, yes, drink it now. It's like, but it's gonna kill all your asses. They're like, fuck it. It's fine. <laughs> that's like cancer cells marching in favor of radiation. You know what I'm saying? Radiation treatment for the win. I'm like, but it's going to kill you. <laughs> like, that's just the weirdest thing. Look, I'm not really, I don't really care about all that shit. But like, because, you know, I, I got shit going on in my life. But that's such a weird take. I've never understood that take. Queers for Palestine. I'm like, bro, what do you, <laughs> they would go over there and say that shit. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, of course not. They'd kill your ass. What are you doing? <laughs> you silly bitches. Oh, man. Oh, whiskey sour says you defend Necrocata uh, that has acted in the same fashion. I don't actually elaborate for me if you don't mind. Like what and when and where? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is there like a specific? Or are you just saying like in general? Defend him over what? Because I need to know. I, I'm sure I've defended him before. He's my friend, of course. <laughs> Obviously. See, look now. One thing you got to look at when it comes to this kind of stuff is. The perspective of a viewer. Uh, so a lot of people will be like, I hate Nick Ricada because of this thing. And then they're like, now every other creator that are friends with him in real life should hate him too because of my viewer perspective, I need th I, he needs to do that. I don't really know. Nick's never done anything to me. He's cool with me. He has, he did, he did disappear though. So I, I got to be transparent. I don't, I haven't talked to Nick in a long time. So. But I, shit, I don't. Yeah, I mean, your friends. You defend your friends, like it's so whiskey. Like for example, whiskey. If like your closest friend did something that like another mutual friend didn't like, are you gonna swear them off even though you don't care? No, that's see, that's the difference. I I'm not like a viewer of Nick or me. We're just friends in real life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah. Um. Beep, 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 whiskey. So whiskey says uh, Nick is complaining in the past. Nobody understands how hard stream at the same time turns his back on people that have his fans that have his fans turns back on people. I don't understand. Um, Nick is complaining in the past that nobody understands how hard stream at the same time. I'm confused. I don't understand. Um, hold on. So uh, let me attack the first part because I don't really understand the second part. He turns his back on people that say has his fan have his fans. I don't know what that means, but I do know Nick's playing in the past and nobody understands how hard it's streaming. I, I'll agree with that. So this is actually, this goes really, um, this goes really, really hand in hand what we're going to talk about today with Asmongold. So 
Streaming is is a different beast entirely. Streaming is pretty like it's kind of like mentally taxing, especially if you're not up for it. If you're up for it, it's whatever. But if you're kind of not up for it, it is brutal. You know, you kind of feel like you've been hit by a truck for some weird reason. <laughs> I don't really understand it. Um, so yeah, it has its own like it has its own like grooves and moves. My situation is, or my opinion rather, is people are claiming real jobs are easier than streaming. And that is some bullshit, right? So Asmongold's saying the same thing. He's like, you just don't understand. And I'm like, for one, you worked for the IRS for three months, and that's your entire work experience. I worked for 11 years full-time, well, 13 years full-time, not counting the years I was at Piggly Wiggly and other restaurants when I was a teenager. And... Absolutely not. I would much rather only be streaming. Please, God. I do. I never would ever want to go back <laughs> to like work in retail. Please, Jesus. So, yeah. Now, um, streaming is completely different. It like just kind of like having to. Because, you know, sometimes you guys can all agree, agree with this. I'd hope sometimes you're not like buzzing, right? Like, sometimes you go out, you're fucking buzzing, you're like, woo, and then sometimes you're like, oh, I'm like kind of tired, right? But then you had to go on stream, and you have to do the same shit, um, which kind of reflects. Sometimes I'll tell people, I'm like, dude, boys, I am fucking out of it today, so just give me give me a break today. So I'll be transparent with everybody. Ah, I kind of suck. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, yeah. When Nick said streaming is, streaming is, people don't probably realize that streaming can be hard sometimes. Sure. I've been there, man. Especially like when there was like a whole six month period where I was like dreading streaming every time I fucking stream. Like I was like, oh, but that kind of passed and I kind of changed things around. Now I'm feeling good. So get on it, dog. On it. But thank you, Whiskey, for your your question. To be fair, I would uh, love to talk to Nick though, um, or have him on my show or something. Um, but he's been real sick and. Just going through some shits. I don't know what shits he's going through, but it's obvious he's going through some shits. So, uh, Snafu says, Don't drink soda, drink water or water with lemons. What the hell are you talking about? Water with lemon? Are you gay? I don't, I don't like lemon water, but I do like water. I like water. Water is great, but not lemon water. Let's talk about some asthma gold. By the way, boys, we're a tenth of the way to Naked Snake. Big shout out to uh, Billy Hatcher and Trent Westbrook. Today is the last day, by the way. Today is the last day for the Phoenix Red Boys to be on my Phoenix uh, race car. It's on Fox Sports 1 next Friday, 6 p.m. Um, it's my first ever NASCAR Arkham Menards deal, um, and your name will be on the car. We have 20 plus the rollover um, so far on the list. Every Red Boy, $100 Super Chat or more is going to be on the Deck lid of my car. I get it. I get it. I'm going to send out the order to print it tomorrow morning. So if you guys remember the one from Daytona, it was on its ass. So same thing. Veteran biker. Check my stream stats. Older, tired, Navy vet. Just talking politics. How do you check a stream stat? Veteran biker. Thank you, veteran biker, by the way, for your gold boy. Let's give him some love. <laughs> um, I think he was just saying it was exhausting. What, like streaming? Yeah. It Sure. Uh, yeah. Doing anything is exhausting, you know? But it's like a different thing. <laughs> like, streaming can be exhausting, sure. Uh, but I would rather be stream exhausted than anything else on Earth, right? I mean, doing anything. Like, putting your energy at all towards anything is going to be like depleting whatever energy that you have. Um, but to imply it's harder than like working a nine-to-five, like at a bank or being a security guard or working as a, a CO at a prison. No, thank you. Thank you, veteran biker. Love you, dude. Appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you. I have a PO box. My PO box just got removed for whatever reason. I went there to pick up stuff and it was locked. And I was like, okay, I guess that's at the end of that. Um, I pay it every year, but whatever. Yeah, sure. Cecilia. Great point. Uh, doing something you love can be exhausting. By the way, um, I've raced short track races where I'm in the car for like two hours and it's like a gajillion degrees and I love racing and I get out of the car I, and I'm so ready to get out. I'm like, get me out of this some bitch. When I pull, pull over, <laughs> I'm like, ah, get me out. I'm dead. You know what I'm saying? So, but I love it. 
but it is very, 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 it's very exhausting. Um, just because you're 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 working towards the thing, the the height and focus, you have to focus so hard, like brutally hard, man. It's crazy. Here we go. All right, boys. It's that time again to EFAP a little. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. We are now a fifth of the way to Naked Snake that fast. Look how fast we killed that. Metalhead! Madman. Hey, Camelot, do you have a sword? A sword? I mean, yeah. I got like two swords for some reason. Don't ask why. Okay. Sword? Thank you, Metalhead. I appreciate you, dude. You're the man. Kiss on your penis. I mean, your face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're goaded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My boy, Metalhead Madman. I love your name, by the way. I get to see Phil Labonte tomorrow. I think. I've never met him. We've uh, he's been on my show before, but I've never met the man. I'm so excited. I'm like Phil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's someone due to Phil when I see him. Not really. It's Phil. I'm just kidding. Don't fucking don't, don't beat me up. <laughs> oh, Jay's Phil. Mm. No, what's up? It's all good. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, anyways, metalhead. What the hell's going on? Is there just two red boys just popped up out of nowhere? Are you kidding? Wow. Look at these maniacs. You guys ready? Are you guys ready for this? Veteran Biker. Oh my God. Put me on the car. Streaming's not as hard as uh, being a submarine. 100%. I feel like people misconstrue when I'm like, Shitting on Roach, I mean Asthma Gold. When I'm shitting on Asthma Gold, they're like, "I've heard you say streaming's hard in the past." And I'm like, "No, I didn't say it's not hard in some aspects." Or Are you sure? Everything, five, dude. Daytona was hard. I was at Daytona for five days. I love Daytona. I love getting in race cars. It's hard because it's a lot of energy. It's, it's the Daytona was too much, man. It was like five days. But that being said, um, they misconstrue that with. The original statement was streaming was implied streaming is harder than a nine to five job. And it's not. It never will be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. Veteran biker, you're on there, my man. Veteran biker. My boy. I'm gonna put exclamation points. Did you ever DM me? I thought I told you to DM me. Maybe you did, and I'm just an asshole. I <laughs> you know, uh, maybe it's in the do I, I'm sure I follow you. I don't know. Thank you, Veteran Biker. Just shoot, shoot me a message. I'll see. I know I turned my messages on so anybody can message me because every Red Boy is like a small way to sponsor me, right? Because it goes on my car. It's like a small way to sponsor you, boy. That being said, um, companies sponsor me as well. Um, I'm meeting up with some really cool people in Phoenix going to their warehouse. Um, I'm flying to West Virginia tomorrow. Same thing. Um, some big companies. Uh, uh, one of my friends, uncles owns a really big company that we've been talking to, but they give like twenty, forty thousand dollars a pop because that's how that's like how much, how expensive this shit is. So the the Red Boys are kind of like a small way to sponsor, so I can like basically pay for flats and shit. Even though I don't get it till two months later anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it's like a small way you can help me out. And plus, you get represented in some way, shape, or form. So, thank you, Veteran Biker. Also, there's just two more Red Boys. This is crazy. What the fuck's going on? What is happening? We haven't even started the show yet, you bitch. <laughs> God. Two people. I've never even seen these names. And Whiskey's on there. My boy. Veteran. Here we go. Let's get Renee Billerills. Let's go. Oh, my God. Gosh, look at these red boys. What's up? What's up? Good luck in race. Um, uh, anything can be exhausting, but there are things that are more enjoyable. Oh, that's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. Renee Villarreal is going on the Phoenix race car. Keep in mind, you guys can watch this on TV on Fox Sports 1 next Friday. Not this Friday, but next Friday, March 8th, 6 p.m. Eastern. You can watch me live on TV. Vroom, vroom. But I gotta, you guys gotta understand the expectations here, okay? <laughs> like, real quick. Um, my goal 
It's the log laps, hone my craft, practice pit stops. This is the first time I've ever done live pit stops, boys. Practice pit stops, try to improve, stay out of trouble, bring the home, bring the car home in one piece, scoop up the winnings, get the hell out of there, and try to get a top 15. That's the stretch goal. So people, for some odd reason, people are always like, if you don't win, you're a bitch. I'm like, that's this is my first ever thing, dude. Ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, there's been guys that won like their first, like in their first couple of outings, they like won. Yeah, they were like 10-time champions of other series before they ever got there. This is my first thing. Now, granted, I've, I've raced for short track for years, but this is my first NASCAR deal. So you're going to see my name down there in like the 15, 20s, maybe higher, lower, I don't know. But just keep an eye on me. You'll see it. Expectation is to bring her home in one piece. Talladega is going to be big. Don't miss that race. Renee, I love you. Thank you so much. You're on there. Spawn Killer says, I work in retail and I work 10 hours a day. I would love to stream. I agree. <laughs> Dude, people don't get it. Now, look, I shouldn't say people. Asma Gold and Hassan Piker don't get it. That's what's going on. Thank you, Spawn Killer. I love you. Whiskey Sour. So there's a social difficulty and a social draining aspect of streaming. I'm not arguing. I'm trying to understand. I've been a fan of GameStop Inc. Red Boy. You don't have to put it on the car. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna whiskey sour. I want. I, I would love it to say whiskey sour on my car. That's that makes sense uh, in NASCAR. No. Um, socially draining. Sure. Um, it's not really socially draining for me. I know people say that, but it doesn't. I don't feel like I'm in a room with 500 people. I feel like I'm hanging out. With, I'm just reading the chat. That's. It feels like when I'm in another chat when I'm watching like. Ethan stream or I'm watching like flux. I'm just seeing the chat. That's kind of how it is to me. Um, some people don't, they think the complete opposite, but if I go out to a party for like three days in a row, like when I was at Daytona, we, me and me and Karis, we were drinking like every night. That's that gets, that's when your social battery starts melting. Okay. And I don't mean social battery. Literally. I'm just trying to, you know, use the phrase to appeal to the white women in chat that's that made the phrase up steph and carrie understand thank you whiskey um by the way whiskey sour also dropped a hundred dollar super chat whiskey sour oh my god my boy you're on the car for phoenix even though you said don't do it i'm doing it you're on there boy you can't stop me you can't stop me. It's going to be on the purple car. If you haven't seen the car, it's purple. It's beautiful. Big old purple car. Thank you, Whiskey Sour. It's called the Grimace. Um, and don't forget, Whiskey Sour is the third Red Boy, fourth Red Boy, third Red Boy of the night. The fourth Red Boy, though, is Ass Duff Quirty. Ass Duff Quirty. <laughs> Putting it on there, bro. Carrie's like, I don't know what social battery is. Carrie, you don't leave your room. Of course, you don't know what a social battery is. Come on. Thank you, social quarty. I mean, Asadova. Asadova? Thank you so much. <laughs> That's the fourth Red Boy. We're one Red Boy from a Red Boy night randomly on a Wednesday, and we already hit Naked Snake. Is this going to be two five milks in a row? Holy balls. Wow. Wow. And we're there. We're, we're, we're 30 minutes into the stream. We're almost there. It's crazy, boys. We're 450 away. Wait, where's my where's my rumble chat? Oh, <gasps> there's a there's rumble. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm a bad friend. I didn't have the rumble chat up. I didn't open a locals chat because I was running late because I showered. Reagan Knight says, What's up, bitch? He also says, Can't wait to see you in races in Phoenix, bro. Make sure you text me or get my phone number or something before I show up to Phoenix. Damn you. I'll be there Wednesday. Thank you, Reagan Knight. I love you. I appreciate you, dude. Two gold boys in Rumble. Heat the man. Steve Chino says, I want to take a shower. Would you know or take a, a golden one? Did you know Zia likes to get peed on? That's weird. Um, <laughs> I would too. I would throttle Jenna Ortega. She's beautiful. Throttler. I'd last like one second though. <sighs> it's not true, Carrie. I was always sitting on the couch and you were all looking pissed the whole time. I was on the couch and you were looking pissed at me the whole time. I'd see you eyeball me from across the way just looking pissed. And I'm like, Carrie, how am I supposed to doggy style you? I mean, I mean, how am I supposed to talk to you if you're going to be just pissed the whole time? You know? <laughs> All right, guys. Can we talk about Asthma Gold? You guys keep freaking dropping shit. Oh, 
my God. Jesus. I feel like Eric July getting showered. What are you guys doing to me today? Thank you, guys. Renee Villarreal. We're the first pink boy of the stream. That, my friends, is a rainbow night. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think some streamers get exhausted because they're put on a persona as opposed to being who they are. Talking to people that are watching them. Also, I think I saw might hate this face. <laughs> That's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. By the way, um, I agree with that. With that assessment that people that are disingenuous and fake have a really hard time streaming. Um, and they get overwhelmed and fucking sparse, bro. I get it. I have not taken an extended time off of streaming since 2019. Obviously, sometimes I go to a race and I have to be in a race car. So I can't stream, you dumbass. But I always come back and I stream, right? Um, because I have to. I don't have a like a $5 million, $10 million deal with anybody. If I did, I don't know. Shit, I might. <laughs> if a company gave me $10 million, my happy ass might take a day off. I don't know. I don't know. But also, I, I have a, a horrible, irrational fear of letting people down. So that's kind of dangerous. I can't help it. But Flux, are you Flux? So you, you said you're going to Dover. That's going to be fun. <clears throat> um. All right. Thank you, Renee. I love you. I appreciate you. Are you gonna Are you gonna uh, sit on my face and Dover, Flux? Hey, man. You can switch teams for like ten minutes. Or, well, 27 seconds really is all you need. Uh, thank you. All right. Um, seconds first loser. See, you guys are bitches. You guys are bitches. All right. <laughs> seconds the first loser. Can I get a race behind me, please? Please. All right. Here we go. So let's let's watch Asmongold because um, he's going to have some real bad takes and we're going to enjoy them. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's watch this. And I'm going to try to let it play a little bit because it's really long. And I don't want to be on stream for seven hours um, shitting on Asthma Gold. Feels like a long time to shit on Asthma Gold. The dude only spends, doesn't even spend seven minutes cleaning his room. I don't feel like I should spend seven hours talking about it. All right. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Oh, look. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me a ghost meteor. I got to fucking. I, I can't. Wait. I was about to start, but I guess we're not going to start yet. Could you ever live stream driving a race? Old man cometh. No, uh, it is against uh, the contracts. The contracts that they have with the Fox Sports, unfortunately. Abba and Preach shout out made a video about me like a month or two ago, and that was really cool of them. I got like two thousand subs. I was really appreciative of that. It was cool. Um, they're cool as fuck. I'd love to hang out. I'd love to have them on the show, but I'm a small fry. <laughs> Ghost Meteor. Let's give him some love. You guys ready? Ghost Meteor with a red boy. He's going on the car. He's going on the car. Oh, my God. Ghost Meteor joining the club going hard as hell. Let's read the Super Chat because he's doing some crazy shit. Hold on. Meteor. I got you. I got you. I hope I get to see you again this year, man. Um. Ghost Media says, just sold a $1.6 million home and about to list another one for $2 million. About to make enough not to work for a whole year. So now, time to share the love. But also, you can just keep doing that. And then you can make enough to not work for 10 years. And then just keep doing that. See, that's the goal, right? You make enough to survive for like a long, long time. But then you just keep grinding. Then eventually, you're 50. And you're in Vegas getting blown by like nine Filipino hookers. Because they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ghost Meteor. I love you and I appreciate you. If you are you a realtor, is that what you're saying? If you're a realtor and you have your own realty company or handle or logos and shit, if you start making a lot of money and you want to tax write offs for marketing purposes, throw a logo on my Arca race car. Get me through one race. Who just rang my doorbell? I swear to God. There's a car outside. I swear. If... They're driving away. Okay, cool, cool. 
I got swatted last week real real brutally, so I'm like on my I'm on edge tonight. All right, here we go. <clears throat> <sighs> Help people move to Texas. Oh, isn't that something? That's cool. You're saving the world one house at a time. All right. Thank you, Ghost Meteor. I love you. I appreciate you. No, I think we're good. The car is, well, they're still sitting there, but they're in their car now. I think they're leaving. Yeah, they're leaving. All right. We're good. We're good. All right. We got five Red Boys. It's a red ass night to, tonight. Whiskey Sour, Acid of Aquarity, Ghost Meteor, Renee Villarreal, and Veteran Biker. Five Red Boys. <laughs> 666 chat revenue. That's funny. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. Thank you, Carrie, for sending the DoorDash to the mods. Three, three, three away from fight milk. It was Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, Pavlo Law or Pavlo John. When I was 25, two or th I think it was two, um, like missionary girls, that's what they're called, missionaries, right? Came to my or mer missionaries. Mercenaries? Fuck. They're like the Mormon girls. Came to my door at like midnight and were trying to come in and talk to me. And I was like, no, no, no. Uh, please no. And now I realize that was a mistake. I think they were trying to like get wrecked by me and I really regret it. Granted, I, I was married. So, you know, when I was married, I was not even, I, I didn't even fucking fathom even that was an option. And then I learned everything's a scam. All right, here we go. <laughs> and then I learned it was all fake. It was all bullshit. Thank you, guys. What's up, Fire Goddess? How you doing, baby? All right, let's watch some of this show, um, and we're going to comment on it. I'm going to try to let it play a little, though. Um, they don't go out past 8. Bro, they, it was like midnight, bro, guy. I'm not joking. And they were in their full garb, and then I told them, no, thanks. And they turned around and walked down the sidewalk into the darkness. They might have killed me. I don't know. No one died on my street that night. But also, uh, maybe they were trying to get wrecked. That would have been cool. Anyways. But, you know, I, I threw that opportunity away because I was trying to be a good husband. <laughs> Fuck. All right, here we go. Okay. What? Oh, you. Hold on, let me turn my, my speakies on. You're a missionary at Sketch. What were they trying to do, bro? Guy? That's what I'm trying to say. What the hell were they trying to do? Were they trying to get, like, duped out by, like, a, a young strapping lad? <laughs> they wanted to share the good news. You blew it. That's what I've, I've, I've thought about that for years, too. Uh, I've thought about this for years. Use the streaming 100%. They literally can turn it off after four. They can turn it off after five. But because they want to make more money, mm -hmm. they keep streaming. And then they want to get up here and then complain about how hard it is. Mm -hmm. You're literally choosing it. That's like you do it for money and then complain and it hurts. Today's tough. I'll, I'll, I would respond to that. I'm going to let them get into that in the video because this is obviously just like a preamble. And so we'll let them get into it. Or uh, our favorite socialist is getting in trouble. Hmm. Here we go. Hamas Hiker. So uh, I like, see, even Asmond Gold had like a smirk. He's like, oh, here we go. They called him a socialist. He is one, Asmond. What is up with the deal of like millionaire content creators defending fucking millionaires who are also content creators who support a structure that wouldn't allow them to exist? This is so silly to me. <laughs> oh, social. It's like, dude, you if you believe in pure and true socialism you can't be a streamer and be rich and have ferraris that's not a thing it's so strange so strange to me atex says miss daytona story car problems yeah car wasn't just wasn't fast enough um and there was a lot of cars there it was the first year in like a decade where more than 40 cars showed up and only 40 start um but they're apparently going to be changing that maybe in the future um but the next time we're at a super speedway in April, Talladega, we will be in a car that's fast enough. I've, we are, we already got it worked out. It's going to be wild. By the way, Sage, we've got 30 seconds into the show, and Sage decided he's dropping a red boy. The Sage! You better conquer that fear of not letting others down then. Yes, of course. I'm adding to it. Thank you, Sage. I appreciate you. Yeah, um, that's why Daytona was so rough on me because we did not make the race and I felt like a complete failure. Um, although it was it was kind of out of my hands anyway, but still, that's why I'm making sure that we're covered. See, well, in Phoenix, um, I start the race no matter what. So we're good. So no matter what happens, I'm gonna be in the Phoenix race. So that's cool. Thank you, Sage. Love you, Sage. You're the goat, Sage. Six red boys tonight. 2.30 to fight milk. Is it a double fight milk night? I don't know. 
Thank you so much, Sage. I appreciate you, Sage. What is up with these super chats? Crazy as hell. We always rocking. We always rocking here in this tiny ass streamers community. Workers of the world unite to give me a Ferrari. Thank you, Fire PA. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly true. Here we go. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired, but a real job doesn't suck the soul oh, sorry, out of you. Sorry. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Shut that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Hold on. Sorry. Come on, keep listening. Oh, so, oh God. What? So a nurse is not that doesn't have a real job? Hold, you know what? According to the South people, it's not a contract. So let's see the full video. Okay. Yeah. Here, here's the whole video. Watch the whole video. Yeah. No, 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 no. Social battery wise, unless you're in retail, unless you're in fucking retail, it's very different. You're out of I'm going to die, dude. There's motherfuckers who are accountants in here and they're misunderstanding what I'm saying. A real job does not expand your social battery in the same way as someone who did a sales job, a real job. Okay. I'm telling you. As, oh my God. I love Hassan Pakri. He's so cute. As someone that's done a sales job, a real job, fuck, fuck off, Hassan. God, what is the deal with Hassan and Asthma Gold flexing their two month job from 15 years ago? Oh, I worked a real job in 1999, so I have a good opinion on this. Eat my ass. You don't. You don't. Are you shitting me? God, I worked a month when I was 18. I worked for a whole month. It was just, yeah, I know. I know all about the working environment. Bitch, you shitting me. I worked longer hours and for longer when I was 15 years old at Piggly Wiggly with a worker's permit given to me by the, the, the county I lived in. Then these both have worked combined in their entire life, probably. While I was at Piggly Wiggly at 15 years old. God, these crazy bastards. You, as someone who did, did both, nine hours of, of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out from social scenarios. After nine hours of that, I could probably do physical labor. It would not bother me, but I can't do more social shit. That he could probably do physical labor. We wouldn't know because he's never done it, but he probably could do it. Also, let's just put it out there. He's been a streamer for what 16 17 years he's been a streamer for like 16 no that's not right six seven years maybe 11 years i don't know he's been a streamer for a long ass time but he worked a job for like a handful of months maybe that's not the same that's not the same equivalent you haven't had time for your social battery or any other arbitrary mental battery to be affected in the normal job because you've never worked one it's so silly what's up matt fox and how you doing dude that's my point there are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons service sector people pleasing jobs would be very similar those are like i think customer service type shit but like if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales my interactions with clients was limited way more yeah. limited than like constantly is this on like times two it's on one five it feels like it's going a billion miles an hour though having to do this for nine hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours that's what that's what like sucks your your social battery and you just tap out after it yeah think about it this way like you give presentations for your job, right? Imagine giving a presentation for nine hours straight. It's like after a while, you'd be like, I don't want to talk ever again. <laughs> That's the context. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what jobs you you work at, mm -hmm. but it seems like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And you, hundred percent, I can't say it better than myself. <laughs> See, this is this is where we're running into a discrepancy, and we're we're having a clash of perspectives, right? So Asmund Gold is in a very similar situation that Hassan's in. Right. So Asmund Gold worked at the IRS for a couple months. For like a summer. A long time ago. <laughs> so his entire job experience is streaming. I have streamed full time for four and a half years. I think almost five years actually now. I worked full time for 13 not including my restaurant jobs for the two years prior when I was a teenager, 14, 15, 16. My perspective is almost five years of streaming full-time versus, four, let's say, 14 years, split the difference with the part-time, 14 years of working full-time. I'm not saying my opinion is more valid, but I own both perspectives. I did it for... And I didn't just do retail. I did retail for thir for eleven years. I did retail multi unit management for two, where I didn't. I wasn't involved in customers. I was a, a field manager. Um, and then of course restaurant stuff, which I wasn't a server. I was like a, a either a busboy or I was like a back stock for Piggly Wiggly, right? So I didn't really work with people that much. But at GameStop, it was all people the whole time. 
So the perspective there is I've done both for extended years and I've also done streaming for extended years. And I'm telling you, a job is just, it is way more social sucking, mentally sucking, physically sucking. It's all of those things. Asmongold and Hassan have the same perspective because they've never worked a real job. You can definitely say all day, uh, I worked a real job, so I have the perspective, but they don't give you the disclaimer. Hassan's not going to tell you that he only worked for a couple months 10, 15 years ago. Asmongold's not going to tell you he only worked for a couple months 10 to 15 years ago. Because when you add that little disclaimer in there, it makes everything they're saying absolute bullshit, which is why this video has like 60 or 70% downvotes right now. Because their perspective is literally borderline retarded. Because they don't have one. Oh, I worked once two, for two months. That's the whole point. So, based on Asmongold's Reddit, he worked for a couple months at the IRS. A long time ago. Hassan, same thing. He had a sales position. A long, long, long time ago. That's the point. You gotta, you gotta add this disclaimer in. And they don't. They just say, oh, I've worked a real job. How long and where? Oh, it was two months? 20 years ago? Yeah. Your perspective is not going to be accurate in this situation. Hence why both of these both of these creators are getting completely shit on. And Asmongold, this is probably the most disliked Asmongold video of all time right here that we're watching. Saying people that I can talk from my perspective. Um, whenever I worked at the IRS, I think that was less socially draining than streaming. I think that, like, obviously, whether a job is harder or not, it's so hard to say whether a job is harder or not. Because, like, for example, a lawyer obviously works very hard. Or at least some of them do, right? But are they... And again, we're back to the perspective of when I worked at the IRS for a couple months versus streaming for 10 years. If I worked at GameStop, for example, in 2011, I started in 2007, but what if I worked at GameStop in 2011, June, July, August, and September, and then I quit and became a streamer? What would I be telling you right now in this same situation? And my entire work experience is four months in 2011. I would be like, yeah, no, I completely agree. So, uh, streaming's hard as fuck. It's definitely harder than when I was at GameStop part-time for four months. 100%, yeah. I would say that. Because my perspective would be absolutely... Th and the reason, the reason people are pissed about this perspective is because everybody works a normal job. Anybody that's above 18 years old, 20 years old, all the way to 65, 70 are working full-time right now. So when a guy that's been working for 10 years straight hears that, you know, streaming's really hard. You're going to talk to your chat, and they're mean. Yeah, you look like a dumbass. It's very obvious, you know? Are they working physically harder than a construction worker? No, they're not. Absolutely not. So whenever you look at which job is harder to do, you have a number of different like kind of spectrums, right? You have like, is something difficult uh, physically? Is something difficult mentally? Is something difficult emotionally, right? So you have these different spectrums. And then there's also, is something difficult, like in terms of the level of like expertise or education that you need to have, which I think goes into mentally, but it can also be its own spectrum as well, depending on what the job is. I think that any reasonable person would say that obviously being a streamer is not very taxing emotion or sorry uh physically it's clearly not and i think for a lot of people it's not very taxing uh mentally either i think streaming is a great job and i would rather stream than have any other job in the world there are obviously negatives that exist with streaming but those negatives don't outweigh the positives your lowest level form processor worked at the irs stop talking like you work actual full-time jobs well if you work uh for the tax season you can work full-time because you just come in every day uh they hire you and you can work overtime as much as you want also if you're a low-level form processor then that's also a job so what you're saying is that now, and I think this is a problem that like people have, they get emotionally attached to the virtue of work rather than actually talking about what really they're doing and looking at it from a more pragmatic perspective and trying to see it from the perspective of another person. I'm not interested in like your like virtue analysis of whether one job is better than another job. But what I'm saying is that there are some jobs that are more and less mentally taxing or emotionally taxing. Like for example, I bet being a police officer is more emotionally taxing than being a streamer. As I've said, I think being a police officer or a nurse, for example, imagine- This feels like just random semantics now. Like it's just like, okay, well- I mean, technically, 
every job is going to be different and taxing in a different being a UFC fighter is more physically taxing than being a streamer. Yeah, probably. I don't really see how this adds to the conversation at all. This is just like moving the goalpost, maybe. Ah, oh, well, I didn't mean it was a da da I mean, it was a da 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 Remember, he said you're a bad streamer if you only have 400 viewers. And he said that's the reason why streamers are saying it. they're mad at him because he has a lot of viewers and they're not, and he's a good streamer and you're a bad streamer. Therefore, if you think streaming is easy, it's because you're a bad streamer. That's what he said on this last video. Squid, you heard it here, folks. Stealing people's money is less draining than streaming. Working at the IRS, 100%. Thank you, Squid. I love you, dude. Appreciate you. Squid is my boy, but an orange boy. 200 even away from fight milk. Imagine being like an EMS person. I think that's harder than being a streamer in like every single context, other than maybe you don't get swatted, right? Uh, there may be a few other things. So of course there are jobs that don't fit inside of that spectrum and that are harder on all different spectrums, but being a nurse and being an EMS worker or being a cop isn't the only job. Yeah, you're the ones doing the swatting. Yeah, yeah, you're the one showing up. Okay, so let, let's let's continue. But I just want to make sure that like that, that's that's my perspective going into this. The big difference. My perspective going into this is every job is different and all of them are different. Yeah, that goes without saying. Friends, is the monetary difference between other jobs and being a streamer? Being paid a lot of money doesn't make problems go away. Being paid a lot of money makes it easier to deal with problems. There's actually studies that have been done on this, and I, I can show you the graph. I, I'll do it now because I think people are going to disagree. Because uh, for a lot of people, and this is really the reality here. Keep in mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna tell you guys real quick. Um, the only time, the only time, this is unrelated from the video, but it's it's very per, it, it's pertinent. The only time you will ever. And I mean ever hear someone tell you that money doesn't fix everything or money isn't everything are people that are wealthy. Because they, I've had friends growing up that their parents were millionaires. And you know what they used to do? They used, they, and they still do it to this day. They're in their 30s. And they try to tell people they grew up poor because they want to be able to speak to those people. They want to be able to fit in. Own it. Own it. Own it. This is very important. Own it. I'm not going to lie to people and try to tell people that I'm poor right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've done really well on YouTube. Now, obviously, I'm not freaking a, high, a, high, a crazy streamer or something, but I can pay my mortgage and I can pay my bills pretty comfortably with YouTube. And I'll tell you right now, that is a great feeling. And it's been five years now, and I love it. I'm like, oh, thank God. I can like sit in my, on my couch, watch some house, because I love house, and just relax. And I'm not worried about my mortgage. I'm not worried about my power. I'm not worried about my water bill. I'm not worried about my, my car payment or my insurance at all. There are people out there right now that are praying they're praying their car bill isn't taken out on Sunday because their money won't be in their checking account until Monday. And they're terrified of that because that $30 overdraft fee will break them. Those people exist. It's actually the majority of people in the country. Money fixes all those things. What crops up after money is you adjusting to the privilege you have in your own life. And look, I'm not saying like privilege, like why, pri pri why privilege? I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's privilege to be able to make some money. I love, like I'm very, very happy I can pay my mortgage. It is the greatest shit in the world. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Right? Very, very thankful. The issue is, I don't try to let myself get sucked into the well, now I'm sad about this, and now I'm sad about this, and sad about this, because I have to remember where I came from. When I was in my 20s, I was making 32 grand a year. My bills, pretty much my, my, my paycheck hit my bills. That was it. And I had like $500 after the, at the end of the month, maybe, maybe, right? Because I had a good interest rate on my mortgage back then. My mortgage was $600, bro. It was crazy. Now it's like five grand. Not really. It's four grand. But still, it's really expensive. Um. That's because that PMI, those sons of bitches. Anyways, that's the point, right? That's the point. So people that claim 
money doesn't fix all problems, are already wealthy. And I'll give you another parallel, okay? You guys ready for the other parallel? People that claim that being attractive and genetically gifted isn't important are people that are attractive and genetically gifted, right? Because they're playing life on easy mode. Well, it comes with it all. It it creates new problems when you when you have it so easy. Oh, eat my ass! Eat my ass! <laughs> it's silly. All right. Anyways, let's continue. Every time I, I did not get any form of like financial stability until my thirties. So these people that claim, oh, money doesn't everything. Eat my ass, bro. Eat my ass, bro. <laughs> It has it has made my it, financial stability has made my life. I can't even I can't even explain to you how more comfortable I am and secure because of how my life has played out to this point. Um, so, thank God my wife left me. Is that uh, I'm preaching to a very tough audience, uh, arguing my point of view because for the majority of people that are watching me and disagreeing and getting angry, the biggest problem in their life is money. So for them, the idea that you can't like that money isn't the problem. Well, this is going to very much upset them because they look at it from the perspective of like, well, if I had money, then this would totally solve all my problems. And I think if you work out of many jobs, that's absolutely true. And I want to show that with a graph. So let me go ahead and do that. These are some graphs right here that I can show. And these are studies that have my boy, uh, my boy Asmund Gold just unironically Googled happiness versus income and went to images. <laughs> oh, I'm dead, bro. I wonder who funded all these studies. <laughs> Definitely not wealthy people to try to prove to poor people that they have it hard too. They have it so hard. People that are wealthy have it so hard. They have to buy five Ferrari under models before they're invited to buy the high-end Ferrari. Huh? Whoa, it's me. You want a 911 turbo? I have to buy four 911 turbos before they'll give me a GTR S3 invite only edition. <sighs> it's so, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm dead, bro. All right, here we go. Sorry. Is that Master Lions right now? Oh my God. Master Lyons says, I've been preparing business and personal taxes for 30 years. You a CPA, bro? The majority of the IRS and state agents are fucking stupid. Sup, Camelot and everybody else. Oh, well, all government institutions are ran basically by, by like a rat. <laughs> it's it, th There's a reason it's government, right? Remember when the uh, Affordable Health Care Act was passed and then they put up a website that didn't work for like six months? The .gov website? Hilarious. Master Lyons, are you on the car? Master Lyons. Master, 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 lions. My boy, master, lions. You're on there, bro. I put you on the Phoenix car. You're probably already on there, but I, just, I can't find it. So thank you. I appreciate you. Wait, no, you're on the Daytona. You were on the Daytona car. Thank you. That's not even a red boy, but you're already on there. <laughs> you're already on there. I forgot. Thank you, master lions. I appreciate you because the Daytona boys are rolling over. Thank you again. I appreciate you. 150 to naked or so, to fight milk. Let's continue them had done uh, over the years with a number of different people. And basically what you see happening is that, uh, especially whenever you're reaching, you know, again, into this, like leading up to like $200,000 a year, uh, more money will absolutely make you more happy. Absolutely. It will a hundred percent, but that does not necessarily mean that more money infinitely will just make you more and more happy. And that's the perspective that I'm making. That's the point that I'm making. But if you're making, let's say 40, $40,000 a year, I want to make it very clear. Money will buy happiness. If you make more money, assuming you're living in a first world country, right? But he just said it didn't like 10 seconds ago. Uh, this is hard to follow, man. A minute ago, he said money like doesn't fix your problems. And now he's saying money absolutely will fix your problems, probably, maybe, and absolutely make you happy. I'm confused. And, you know, some people, I think 40000 is a lot of money. But uh, this graph, I think, proves my perspective on things. That obviously, yes. <laughs> Wait, no, hold on, Asmogold. This graph on Google Images supports your perspective? You, 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 wait, hold on. You can't just say the graph that you just randomly put up on, on Google Images that's called happiness versus income. <laughs> Support, bruh. Let me just Google just a random thing and pull up images. See? Truth. Making more money matters. 
but it does fall off. It has a diminishing return. And this is uh, reflected in many different graphs. Mean happiness for income bands. Uh, there's one right there. It actually goes down. Uh, I, I mean, that's... <laughs> Don't pull up this graph, Asmongold. No, this is the graph you should not be pulling up. Look at this. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up. Income, happiness versus income. I'm going to go ahead and pull up this graph real quick. Happiness versus income. We're going to pull up the graph right now that he's looking at right now. I'm pulling it up, boys. Where is it? Here you go. This is the graph he's looking at. This graph is what he's looking at. You guys ready? You guys ready for this? This is the graph. The graph. I'm dumb. Graph that Asmongold's looking at right here. Mean happiness for income bands. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It like skyrockets. It skyrockets. It skyrockets to $300,000. Look how happy I am. And then you get to 400000 and then it slightly, and I mean slightly, decreases by not even a point. Not even a point. It's like a quarter of a point. You're fucking with me. Why did he show this graph? <laughs> See, happy, boom, look at it, skyrocket. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. And look at it, it, it just goes straight up. <laughs> See, look at this graph. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, he accidentally pulled it up and he's like, fuck, I gotta like, I gotta, I gotta like justify this. <laughs> fuck, I gotta justify this real quick. Shit. <laughs> the graph nuked his point into oblivion. I love it. Uh, we got to take a, a, a breather real quick for uh, a crazy Canadian in the chat. Just dropped 400 Canadian boys. Matthew Botchin! Oh my God! Look at this maniac! Give him some love! Wow. Wow, we're gonna we're doing it again. We're doing it again, Matt. Damn. Oh. Matthew. Watch him. Damn. My boy just dropped a 400 Canadian boy. A guy that's been supporting me for a long ass time is back. I'm gonna put him on my Phoenix car. Matthew, watch him. Times four. My boy. Let's see what he says. Thank you so much, dude. You are a monster. We hit fight milk. We hit, we killed fight milk. And now we're 300 away from double fight milk. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Desert Cruiser says, what's with all the fart noises? What? What are you talking about? Uh, um, thank you, Matt. <laughs> my boy, dude, you are a goat. He says, hello, everyone. Guess who's back? King of edging himself. Wait, hold on. <laughs> What the fuck? Sorry, PP Milk. What's up, Epic Mike? I gotta make. Why are you not a mod, Epic Mike? Hold on, let me mod Epic Mike. I don't know why you're not a mod. I thought I did that already. I could have sworn I have like a, a visual memory. Um, says I knew that when I came back, Cam like we rant about stuff. Anyway, I'd like to say, without the money I'd be making now, I wouldn't be able to volunteer, which makes me happy. So I agree with Cam lot. Thank you, Matthew. I love you and I appreciate you. I mean, even this random graph one. Google Images supports my thought process. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. You are a goat. Matthew Fauchin. Everybody give him some love. Give him some love. <laughs> I need some ones in the chat for Matthew Fauchin. Drop them ones. Give him some love. Woo. Thank you so much. My boy, helping me out. We're going to Phoenix next Wednesday. I'm meeting up with some people. We have a race there. It's my first NASCAR Arca deal. Going to be in a purple car. I'll bring it up in a second so you can see it. Look at all the ones. Here they come. Let's go. Ones. Ones. Give me a one. I don't know why. It feels like I'm a stripper. Put it inside my G-string, boys. I haven't wiped in days. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Look at all the ones. You guys are crazy. Crazy bitches. All right. Sorry. Thank you, Matt. I love you, dude. Appreciate you so much, man. You guys are goaded. Look at them. They're even getting faster. The ones are getting even faster. Oh, my God. Thank you, Matt. I love you, dude. Welcome back. Back again. I appreciate you. You guys are goaded. Everybody, unbelievable support. It is the last stream to get on the Phoenix car. We've added eight names. 
Wow. What the fuck? Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. And he's a member. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you. Love you. Appreciate you, Matthew Fortune. Thank you. Thank you for becoming a member and thank you for all your love. It's Bailey says, Are you going to the Vegas meetup? I will be in Vegas. I can't go to the meetup though. I tried, but I can't. It's out of my control, bro. But I will be in Vegas because I already bought my tickets because I thought I was going. But it's fine. I will I'm gonna be in Vegas and I'll I'm gonna try to set up my own meetup, I guess. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um <clears throat> yeah, I broke my heart, but it's fine. I get it. I get it. All right, let's continue this story. Thank you, Matt. I love you, dude. You go to I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Matt's the man with the plan. Let's do this. All right, let's uh, hear some more dumbassery from Asmongold. Again, I think that's a, this is a personal problem here. But you can see very clearly, especially leading up to $100,000, uh, yeah, there's a soft cap, right? And so this does happen. You're conflating happiness with problems? Yes, I think that people with less problems are generally more happy, and I think the ability to deal with your problems will lead you to becoming more happy. I, I do think that's true. Yes. Um, and I do think that in general, like we're talking about mean happiness. And so, yeah, I would say so. So you agree. I, I agree to an extent. Like, I, I don't know about this. Like, this is... <laughs> Hold on. All right. He keeps, he's, he's moving the goalpost. He's like, yeah, money buys happiness, I guess. I'm like, what? You said it didn't. Oh, you know, all jobs are hard. I mean, streaming's probably the easiest one, though. And I'm like, hold on, Asmund Gold. You're fine. You did, we are eight minutes in and you, you're pushing the goalpost more and more. Come on, baby. Here we go. This is kind of a weird topic and I could get into it, but I, I don't know if there are more or less problems that money can solve, but I don't think it really matters. I think that a lot of people's problems are internal. But in general, especially if you're like poor, I do think that money will solve your problems, but money will probably not solve all of your problems. And I think in the same concept, it's like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? The pyramid. I think that once people have some problems that become solved, then they will then create new problems that then they will get upset about and then want those problems to be solved as well. I think this is the human condition and it happens with a lot of people. So as soon as somebody has, uh, you know, they, they, they get to a certain, uh, you know, income cap, they start making a certain amount of money, they're happy for a while and then they become unhappy again. Because I think, again, uh, you know, it's an internal problem and I could go back and forth about that. Bro, my house burned down on Valentine's Day. More money would solve my problem. Well, do you think that I'm talking? Like, I, I wonder, like, whenever, whenever I said that, do you think that I was talking about your situation? Do you think that I was referring to the fact that your house burnt down? Of course, I'm not talking about your situation. There are a lot of, like, I mean, again, this and this is what I'm talking about, like, with a, a dishonest, uh, a dishonest interpretation of things. And I think it's, it's more, it's more, more than not. <laughs> hey, Mister Guy that had his house burned down, you're being dishonest. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes, Polly. A good example, Polly. No, um, I like it's just it's just a lot of rambling, man. It's just a lot of rambling. They kind of like come to a point. A lot of rambling. A lot of rambling. Not dishonest. It is something that people are intentionally misunderstanding. So this is a person who's unhappy about what I said. What have I said that you think you, you've typed it seven times now? You, I'm thank you for numbering them. Now I now I can read it. <laughs> so what 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 part of what I said is inaccurate? Like I, most of the guys here that watch my stream and that watch my content, like we're like 30. I don't want to have to treat people like 15 year olds. I just want to talk about real shit and have honest conversations. And I'm not going to mince words or try to avoid certain topics because I know that. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of this whole show so far. Everything is everything. That's kind of where we're at. It's all jobs are all kinds of the hard but not all of them as hard as the other hardness of the hards. And also, I'm not going to mince words. Money probably cures a lot of problems, but also all the problems are still problems, and then money uh, can totally be happy. But sometimes maybe, I don't know. That's kind of where we're at right now. <laughs> That might trigger some people that are like emotionally unstable. So what about this? The part where you've been defending being rich? For By the way, if you disagree with Asmongold, you're emotionally unstable. Days now because of a bad take you said years ago. What did I say that was inaccurate? What did I say? Because it's like it seems like it would be easy for you, right? I mean, you've been you've been watching now for I am burb. He so he says, uh, what he I've been told that he's gonna say this a lot. What did I say that was inaccurate? Um he pretty much says all things are true and then says, what have I said that's inaccurate? He went to the point of like shitting on all these things and now he's backed up and said everything is true all at the same time. Okay. Um, okay. 
The pre service streamers kill servers. It's a classic wow viewer. Okay, so he's, he's a bird, yes. So what part of what I said was wrong? Is it just me or all the worst takes come from chatters who are fairly new or new followers and subs? Yeah, that's because the old ones have gotten banned and the new ones haven't gotten banned yet. That's why. I mean, it seems to me like you've been watching for, actually, I mean, no, you typed this like fucking Jesus, man. Like, did it really upset you that much? Did it really upset you that much? I mean, it seems like it would be very easy for you to explain what I said that was inaccurate. Now, I think the reason why, oh, no, you just typed. Okay, okay, let me read it real quick. I, I saw your name. You really think it's more stressful to be rich than to be poor. Okay, well, I guess I can respond to you very quickly. Okay, he's, so here's what he's going to do. He's going to say, oh, no, it's not, it's probably not more stressful to be rich than poor, um, but it also is stressful to be rich, but it's also stressful to be poor. So that's what he's going to, he's going to agree with all points. So you, he can't be wrong, kind of. And just get this out of the way. No, I don't. Does that help? You quit your job uh, to go up in your room and stream, so you didn't have to do regular shit jobs. So when you're in the position of all set up and claim us regular folk have better work life, it's upsetting. I don't think that anybody's talking about whether they have a better work life or not. I, I think that it's very, I mean, there's like a million different kinds of jobs. And I, I'm sure like, for example, like working in some jobs is like infinitely more ex like stressful than like working in other jobs, for example. Sure. Like, I, I don't think you can really make a blanket statement one way or another. Like now that I've explained my perspective here. I don't think you can make a blanket statement one way or the other, but he totally did that already. <laughs> Are you, do you have anything else to say? Because we, we've, we've gone off on such a tangent. We're two minutes into the video, guys. Two minutes into the video. We're already doing this. Were you not trying to argue that when someone makes more money that they have more stress than when they didn't make as much money? Whenever I was making four grand a month, I was a lot more happy than I am now making less, less than one grand. Okay. Um, well, number one, you need to get off my fucking stream and start figuring out your fucking money. All right. I understand this might not be a popular thing to say, but you got to figure out your fucking money if you're making less than a thousand dollars a month, man. Like get your shit together. And, and trust me, I, there were many times I was in this position too. Okay, like, let's just be fucking honest. There was plenty of times that's when Gold was in this position. And then uh, he just uh, streamed wow. <laughs> Get off my fucking stream, you poor. <laughs> hey, bro, you're too poor. Gotta be at least this rich to watch the stream, bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> I, I'm going to address what you're saying in an honest way. Oh, okay. No, I am not saying this. Unequivocally, period. No, this is not what I am saying. See so that I can't argue with. You're right, but if you're Venice Washington, don't worry about it. Like, but can you please just try to listen to what I'm saying? Like, I, I really wish that you guys sometimes would just listen to what I'm saying before you just start spamming and getting mad. For a lot of people, money is such a big problem in their life that whenever they hear anybody say anything that is even adjacent to money isn't a problem, it immediately, and I, I, I'm not trying to be mean, but it unironically triggers them. And so they stop thinking about what's actually being said and they start arguing against something that they've heard before. They get emotional about it. And I understand that. I get it. I've been in that position myself. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I ever said. I'm not going to ban you. I, I think that you understand my perspective. If can stealth ban. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Um, but uh, yeah, no. And that's the problem is that I think people misunderstand it because they get immediately upset at the concept of it. And so they stop thinking about it and they just start typing or just going, okay, let's go back. You can't think about it because you don't know. So basically what we're getting into now is if you disagree with me, um, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, you're not smart enough to understand and you're too emotionally unstable and you get triggered. So Snoopy, he lives with Roach. <laughs> this is the Roach King. I don't understand. All right. Anyways, not doing a people pleasing job. Sometimes the people that you have to judge, sometimes the people that you have to please in your job mm -hmm. are your bosses or coworkers or coworkers. Yeah. Sometimes you're doing those jobs and yeah. they are the one that are draining you, your coworkers. He's exactly right. He's totally right. But I think that he also is agreeing with what my perspective is because he's using the word sometimes. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the job. Your, your, your definition of what a client is, is yeah. very limited. A client can be someone from outside of your work, comes into your work and then you have to serve them. But a, a client can also be other departments of your job that depend on your position. That's considered a client. And that's people pleasing. We have to work with other departments and have to bend over backwards to just make sure no problems exist. You are people pleasing. If, if yes, every six true. months you have to have a report and you're not dealing with people outside of your work, you're just dealing with people inside of your work. And every six months, every six months, your boss meets you and is like, yeah, we're gonna see how you're doing at the job. You have to please your people, which are your bosses and whatever standards that there is in the company. These are two well, yeah, of course you do. I mean, that's the way anything would work. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think that having a performance review is definitely very different than talking for a living. Like there's like a different type of stress that that creates. And that's what I was talking about with like different spectrums. So like, yeah, he's totally right that you always have to please people because people give you money. Like if, if you look at like having a job as an abstract, um, we stop comparing streaming to other careers. Well, I, I think that there's, 
I mean, there's comparisons to be made. There's comparisons not to be made. If that's upsetting to you, I think that you're emotionally invested in this argument. And <laughs> I don't, I don't like where this is going because it's, it's, it's uninteresting. It's going to all things are true all at once, right? So this is where the argument's going now. It's all jobs are stressful and all jobs are not stressful. And it's like, okay, this wasn't the original point. The original point was money doesn't fix problems and streaming is hard. And it's it's harder in a certain sense than working a real job. And now we're, we're, we've we've backtracked all these statements to all of the things are hard and all the things are not hard. It just depends on if it's hard or not. It's it's kind of like reading a fucking dictionary or the thesaurus or something. I don't know. It's weird. You're not really interested in talking about it. I'm just trying to talk about this. That's all. If this is upsetting for you, then that's not my problem. Obviously, it's it's not the same as any other. Like, no job is the same as any other. You can tell Asmon Gold is a uh, an old-time wow guy because when anybody questions him at all, he just says, uh, why are you mad? You're so mad right now. If are, you're, are you upset? Why are you so upset? If you're upset, then this is your problem. You're upset, bro. You can tell he's a classic wow guy because <laughs> that classic wow guys was molded with meme faces. You guys remember old meme faces? God, I hated them. Remember the meme face? You mad, bro? And then every edgy guy started saying you mad, bro. And they would intentionally um, provoke people so they could say you're mad, you mad, bro, over and over again. That's kind of what he's doing right now. Are you upset? Is this upsetting to you? Are you triggered? Are you triggered? Why are you triggered? Are you triggered? I'm emotionally stable. You're not. You're triggered. Their job. Well, very few. It's a way to seem less emotionally invested and less interested, which means you are above this talking point and everybody that's in the chat that are angry about it, they are just plebs. And I am smart and above all this. This is why I don't take it so serious. That's where the you mad bro is. He's basically you mad broing everybody because he's above the situation. He's like, oh, I don't take it seriously. It's fucking whatever. I'm just talking. Ooh. Yeah, he's a classic troll. 100%. Yeah. Jobs are the same as any other job. But of course, there's similarities be between that. Never had a real job for a long period of time. I mean, it depends on what you define by long, right? Not for more than five years and not consistently for more than two years. No. Uh, I never wanted one. But our favorite. <laughs> okay. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. He's never worked for more than two years. Um, never worked consistently and never wanted a job anyway. Why are we having this conversation? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll just skip that one. That's brutal. He comes from one of the richest families in Turkey. Okay. He's incredibly wealthy. He's always been from a wealthy family. And so this trust fund baby goes on to be a very successful streamer and makes it. You don't really know about this hard work life. That's why a lot of these dudes who before the people never come from backgrounds that are. I do think that Hassan owns his success though. Uh, it's not like somebody else gave him that success. Uh, I think that Twitch is actually one of the most free markets and YouTube is the same thing. I think Hassan owns his success, everyone. I think Hassan owns his success. That's why he's uh, an outspoken socialist and thinks that there should be no people that are wealthy. While he buys Ferraris and stuff. He owns his success. Are you shitting me? <laughs> what? Hold on. Uh, I think that Twitch and YouTube are some of the most free markets in the entire world. And I'll explain why I think that. So there are a lot of people, Young Turks. I understand you've typed this a few times. How many views do the Young Turks get on Twitch? Because they used to have a Twitch channel. As far as I know, they, they, they don't anymore, but they got like 100 or something like that. Uh, they don't get that many. Hassan gets a lot more views than the, than the Young Turks do. So why is it that Hassan gets that many more viewers? Do you think Twitch is meritocratic? I do think that Twitch is meritocratic. I think that Twitch and YouTube is probably one of the most meritocratic places on the entire internet. I genuinely believe that. Free market men tricks. Yeah, exactly. Um, so how YouTube works, for those people that are, are not aware, um, if you um, are a corporate YouTuber, like you made it early on, um, YouTube will just put your stuff in the algorithm all the time because you're assigned with YouTube. It's not a free market. <laughs> What's up, Sonia? And, and here's the reason why I believe that. It's because every single one of you, you are you, the viewer, are the market on Twitch. You are the viewer. You make the decision who is popular and who's not. And you make the choice and you can make any choice that you want for who you want to watch. And if enough people make the same choice, that person becomes successful, whether Twitch, I mean, unless they get banned, right? Uh, whether Twitch likes it or not. 
whether other people like it or not. There's a lot of people who, you know, were very angry about like Kai and like for Aiden Ross, like Aiden Ross got shit on by everybody on Twitch. But because Aiden Ross was entertaining for his community, people came over and they watched him. And the reason for that is because it's a, it's a meritocracy. It's because if you put if you put in work and you get noticed, you can succeed even though other people don't want you to. And so I do think that Hassan does own his success because he put in the time to succeed on Twitch. He streamed on Twitch. People every single day choose to tune in to watch Hassan. Every single day, he cho like people choose to do that. What freer market can you possibly think of than that? Very hard to start if you're poor, though. Uh, you often don't have the time to stream. I'm confused. It's fine. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. There's a lot of difficulties, and we can talk about that too, for sure. Actually, of the people. He is top 1% today. And even back then, when he was part of his family, he was top 0.1% in Turkey. The truth about Hassan, him talking about work and everybody misunderstanding, and they're being really stupid and low IQ when they're listening to responses. This is just a brat who's always been a. 100%. Um, and who can we draw a parallel to right now? You notice how um, my boy just said, well, you know, um, Hassan's just saying everybody has low IQs and they just don't understand. What has Asman Gol been doing this entire video? He's been saying people that don't understand are they are people that are angry, don't understand, and they are emotionally unstable. The all these people are the same. They got too comfortable with celebrity status. They think they're way more important than normal people. They think people care more about their opinions than normal people, just like celebrities do. And if anybody disagrees, they just say everybody's unintelligent and they're the smart ones. That's narcissism, the narcissism talking. I'm not smart at all. I'm retarded, kind of. <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to call anybody in the chat that disagrees. Oh, you're just stupid. Now, Hassan does do that shit. Holy shit. Hassan does do that shit. Brutally. <laughs> He'll just call people stupid over and over and ignorant. And I'm like, oh, gross. A bit rich Pratt. And he's talking about real jobs like he has experience, but he doesn't. And he's not the I'm only not one. sure what he's on. Because Asmund Gold. Thank you. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's all about me. All right, now we get to the good content. React to this. I, I actually like Asmund. Uh, Thank you. Gold is cool. I appreciate Even it. Even if he looks homeless every day. <laughs> well. He is my favorite homeless millionaire streamer. This has been my oh. opinion observing most streamers <laughs> and content creators. Thank you. Most of them are completely out of touch with reality. So people are getting mad. It's a bad take. What's it a bad take of? He says that he gets exhausted socially because he's talking to people for nine hours yeah. a day. You really think that's... You really think that's not true? That's not what he said. I mean, you really think it's not true? That's not the only thing that he said. He didn't say that. He, he, he's right. He's right. That isn't the only thing he said. So like, you know, like in video games where like you have like critical strike, haste, mastery, uh, you know, hit rating and, and all the different stats that like accumulate into damage. Okay. Well, let's say the DPS that a, uh, that the job of streaming does to you is lower than the DPS that a job of a police officer does to you or the DPS that they, a, a, uh, like a nurse does to you. But that doesn't mean that maybe streamers might have a higher crit rating in their situation. So I'm not saying that, of course, everything that Hassan said in the clip is completely accurate, but I'm saying that from his own personal experiences, it is. And I don't think that anybody can really... Everything's accurate from your own personal experiences. And also, I don't understand any of the DPS shit. I was a tank. ...go and take his own personal experiences away from him. You mean parry rating? Yeah, sure. So is, is Asmongold now arguing for his truth? So is that where we're at now? Now we're arguing for Hassan's personal truth? <laughs> uh, it always comes back to personal truth what? every time. Drain because he's working nine hours a day and he's talking to people for nine hours. Yeah, yeah, a day. for sure. I can understand that. Yeah, I can okay. understand the fact that you're going to be drained. One hundred percent. Talking. Over. He said that his job does not is more draining than any normal job. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I don't think that that's really what Hassan was trying to say because he was really talking about and and like also like I don't like because I've I've watched Hassan for years. I've known Hassan. I've talked to Hassan. I don't think that's really what he thinks. Now, maybe he maybe he should have said it in a way that was better, but I don't think that he thinks that. So, like, we can talk about the way that he can... We don't think that... We, wait, hold on. He doesn't think that Hassan thinks what he does is the most important and hardest thing on the earth? Bro, look. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all. If you've ever watched Hassan like, interact with people or people he disagrees with, disagrees with um, he definitely is a violent, violent narcissist. He definitely thinks what he's doing is the most important thing. He definitely thinks what he says is the most truth, the most true thing that has ever existed. And when people disagree, he gets really mad. Like, Hus uh, Asmongold's not getting mad when you disagree. He's just calling you low IQ, right? When you would disagree with Hassan, he starts yelling. And he gets, like, really weirdly effeminate. 
He's like, oh my God, you're so stupid. You're stupid. You're just so stupid. Wow. You're stupid. Like he does that weird, like, like bay, like 18 year old, like bay girl accent thing, you know? So yeah, like, uh, <laughs> he definitely thinks what he's doing is very important. Communicated that. And if it could have been communicated in a better way, sure. But I'm talking about like what the intent was behind the communication. I don't think like if you asked Hassan, do you think that you work harder than a doctor that works in an emergency room uh, on residency? I think that Hassan would say no, I, I do. Or I, I really think that he would say no. So like we can have a conversation about he might be surprised. Oh, like take Hassan would probably be like, well, they're changing uh, one person's life at a time. I'm changing thousands. That's probably what Hassan would say. <laughs> things like just super direct. But I think that if you look at the context of what he was talking about, he was referring back to like a job that he had. And he was talking about like his own personal experience with it rather than all jobs. But these guys are right. I mean, they're right that, yeah, he did say that. I just, I think that it was very clear in my mind that wasn't what he intended. Excluding retail, to okay. be fair. See, like, wait, uh, this, is a, this is a very weird thing that I see a lot when people are defending other people. He's saying Hassan definitely said a thing, but I'm defending him because I don't think that's what he meant. But he said the thing. So either Hassan didn't say an accurate thing or Asmon's just saying he didn't say an accurate thing for no, for no other reason than to arbitrarily defend him. Why? That's what I'm confused about. He's like, well, uh, Hassan definitely said it, but I don't think he meant it. And it's like, but he said it. What do you mean you don't think he meant it? Right? It's very interesting. Um, it's like an arbitrary defense. And it's because they're both in the same situation as far as like their personal lives. <laughs> other than one, ba one bathes and one doesn't, basically. And, and, and life doesn't work like that. Nope. If he just if he just had said my work, what I do right now is extremely draining, you would have yep. just said that. I would have been like, yeah, my man. But what did he say? But you said that your job is more draining than any normal real job. No, fucking no, my guy. It doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. Nothing works like that. But what you're gonna? Yeah, and and I think that they're right. I do. I don't think that. Which is the opposite of what Asmongold said yesterday or the day before yesterday. So, I guess Asmongold's changing his tune. Um, what's up, Eric Lineker? How you doing, buddy? Song minute that way. And after after listening to the clip, I think that it's kind of obvious that he didn't mean it that way. You can read his mind. No, it's not that I can read somebody's mind. It's that I'm interpreting what the person is saying in a way that is, I think, generous and authentic to what the intent of the words are. You're being generous. I think that it's important to be generous to another person's perspective. Yeah, I, I try to interpret everything that people say in good faith. Except for the chat who he calls emotionally unstable. So he tries to s interpret what somebody says with good faith as long as it's another millionaire streamer, not the people in his chat or any of the other people that are shitting on him right now. Interesting. Why? I don't fucking know. <laughs> because if you don't do that, I, I feel like everybody is going to make like a, you know, like verbal mistakes. He has a massive track record of saying retarded shit. Well, so do I. I think that anybody yeah. who streams that long has a massive track record for saying retarded shit. You think who nurses? You're gonna talk to me yeah, about no, people in yeah, the force? Not. Yeah, but they're saying socially it doesn't drain their battery. It could. You're dealing. What are you talking? I know you trolling. You just trolling. Uh, but, but I think his point is that a lot of these people who work in these kinds of jobs after work, they like to go out. They like to go out, that's grab not, beers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Accountants will do that. But Ooh, that's not everybody. That's a couple of people. And if, if it was so, the, the city would be filled with happy hour. Would be every day. Happy hour is on Thursday. It would be filled with people every night. Now, some people, they go home. You know why they go home? Because after they go to work, even if they don't feel like it, they got families to attend to. And they got to do that. Yep. That is so out of touch. So That is stupid take. All right. All right let's and play, him back. Let's, and, let's, let's, let's play for a little bit. Then we'll go. Okay, after you spend nine hours being investigated by thousands of people with every facial movement, everything you say, every word, mm -hmm. with people constantly trying to disagree with you and fight with you, that's not emotionally, sorry, like socially draining. It is exhausting. This is totally yes, understandable. Do you want to know the biggest privilege these guys got? got what? They choose to stream nine hours. hundred percent. They literally can turn it off after four. They can turn this is always the weakness. And, and, and the thing is that he's right. But at the same time, I don't think that he is right. So I think the mind. Damn. This is he. That's the whole video right there. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back for just a second. This is the entire video summed up in three seconds. You ready? And, and the thing is that he's right. But at the same time, I don't think that he is right. So there's the whole video. <laughs> that's the whole video right there. That's all. That's the that's this entire video. Well, I think he's right, but also I don't think he's right. <laughs> that's the, everything has come back to that. Yes, it's harder, but also no, it's not. That's kind of where we're at right now. Oh, I think the mindset that he has 
is accurate, but at the same time, yeah, the- Al Guang with the fuck. Schrodinger streamer. (laughs) These guys probably, I can guarantee you that there's probably a lot of times that these guys make videos and they're like, I don't really feel like making a video today, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't feel like doing this right now. I'm going to do it anyway. And the reason why is because it's their job. And that's what you do whenever, I mean, these guys really, what they have is they have, they own their own business. That's really what it is. So of course you always have the luxury of being able to take time off, but whenever you're not out there competing and putting yourself out there, other people are. And you know how, so, I mean, especially with like social media, right? Like you have to be posting all the time. And of course you can take time off. Absolutely. But there is a risk to taking that time off. And I'm not saying that it's not a privilege to be able to do that. There is a big risk to that. Um, For example, if you don't post on social media, like every fucking day, like a bunch of times a day, and you take months off at a time, you don't fluff your social media. I try to post on everything every day, but it's hard sometimes. You fucking, you'll lose track of time because you're on flights or you're driving. And, um... You're not uploading videos. You're not streaming. Uh, your con- your channels, your channel will die overnight. Die. I know streamers that went from ten thousand concurrent to like four hundred because they take time off. You can't do that shit. So, hundred percent, you have to do it. Uh, but what I am saying is that it doesn't come with a cost. Put it off after five, but because they want to make more money, mm-hmm. they yeah. keep streaming, and then they want to get up here and then complain about how hard it is. Mm-hmm. Who here gets to choose their fucking hours at work? Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people. The fact that you guys even have the goal to compare yourselves to regular people when your extra hours of labor are rewarded with more and more money is insane. Well, I think most people get paid overtime, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, if, if anybody is is working extra and you're not being paid for that, you're not getting paid overtime. Um, So, i.e. example, exhibit number A77 as to how it's very apparent that Asmongold's not worked in a long time is you don't get that that overtime's not a thing. There are probably one out of every thousand jobs that will allow you to do overtime. They will fire your ass if you get overtime. They'll give you a warning, and then they'll fire you. Also, when you're on salary and you're above the federal federal minimum, you don't get overtime. So yeah, Asmongold definitely hasn't worked in a long time. You don't just get overtime. That's not a thing. (laughs) Like, I remember if we, dude, if we went over on overtime, once we got moved over to hourly as managers at GameStop, they would fire your ass. They would fire the living balls off of you. 100%. If you went over like two or three weeks in a row, fired. Fired. So yeah, him saying most people get overtime is a very, very big indication that he's never, he he hasn't worked in at least 10 years. So um, definitely not in the retail specter, definitely not in the a restaurant specter. Um, I you, probably over time would happen mainly in the medical field, probably. Um, in a hard physical warehouse job, sometimes warehouse or sometimes overtime is what they try to sell to get employees. So, but other than that, yeah, it's gonna be brutal. So, yeah, salary's brutal. That's one thing, man. Whew, salary is brutal. Not salary? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, but if you're being paid hourly, you do get paid extra. No, you dumb fuck? No, that... that. So, you, you if, guys... If- <laughs> Ask my gold so confused. He's like, what do you mean? No. Because people in his chat are saying, no, you don't. Every single person in his chat saying, no, nah, bro, it's not... You don't get overtime. Overtime is not a thing. You don't get overtime. There are some jobs out there that overtime still exists, but... The vast majority of the jobs in the U.S. corporately owned jobs will not allow you to get overtime anymore. And if they do, if it's they'll, you'll have to get it approved like in advance. If you don't get it approved in advance, they'll write you up for it. So, mill work. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you're being, and also like I don't know about the country you're in, but like if you're in the U.S. and you're being made to work over your hours that you're supposed to work. You need to file a complaint, and you can maybe have a lawsuit, and then you wouldn't have to work, and maybe you could have time streaming. Uh, no, it's at will. Uh, at will states. <laughs> like, <laughs> he does. He doesn't really know anything. I don't think about any of this. To be fair, um, you know, fucking wrong for termination. In what state are we talking about? <laughs> like, I declare sue. You just fucking sue him with all your infinite money you have. Let's go sue the corporations, everybody. You can't. Okay, let real quick segue. You can't just sue corporations. I mean, you can. (laughs) 
but you got either a you're gonna lose or it's gonna be postponed and you're on retainer for over 100 grand you can't afford that shit because you got fired from your job anyways my boy my boy <laughs> my man over here it's, it's no idea what he has no idea what how anything works it's kind of fun actually to, to it's kind of fun to see someone that has no idea how the the workforce works anymore because they haven't been even kind of anywhere near it in such a long time it's pretty cool um freddy says i think you're right but also think you're not right you bastard i think you're right but not right but i think you're right on being right but i think you're right but also not right but i think you're right thank you freddy or should i say asmon gold's burner what's up dude thank you i appreciate you my friend we're closing in on double fat milk today on a wednesday we're like 200 and something away thank you freddy i love you Appreciate you. It's the decimal. I don't know exactly. Thank you, Freddie. I love you. Appreciate you. Pony up says, let him cook <laughs> himself. Freddie says, also overtime, not guaranteed. No, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 100% right here. You can sue if you're stupid and don't mind going broke and then not even winning. Yeah. A, a lot of people, a lot of people, um, they think you can just declare the word sue and you get money. None of that works. Um, uh, right to work states, at will states, those are two different things, but I always get them confused because I'm a dumbass. But there's a large portion of states where they can terminate you for dis uh, um, insubordination. So here's a little tidbit for everybody real quick. A company can fire you at any point, at any point in these certain states, which are a lot of them, by the way. I think it's like 41. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. Um, you can Google it, uh, but that's the thing. So they can fire you for any reason at any point. Overtime. Oh, you went over on overtime? Oh, we're going to have to let you go. Why? Uh, you know, we're just feeling like we need to have let you go. And guess what they fire you for? Insubordination. They don't fire you for going into overtime. They fire you for insubordination. It's a blanket clause. Therefore, you cannot sue for wrongful termination. If you work in any state and the manager slaps you and says, I don't like your black ass, and then they fire you, that's different. <laughs> but every corporation, every LP, every HR department is trained on this. You can be fired. You can be fired in one of these states. Okay. And they will list it as insubordination. They can see you, they can see you go into overtime and they've warned you about it, but they're going to just tell you, hey, we're going to have to let you go. Things aren't working out. Insubordination. They're not going to say, oh, you went into overtime and implicate themselves. I have worked at several companies and I have been trained. When I was at Walmart, I was trained on how to terminate people to avoid having to pay any form of unemployment. We were trained on that, man. You don't give specifics. You just terminate because our state allows that. Do not say why, especially when it's really something fucked up, right? But Asmongold has no idea about this. He's like, you could just sue, bro. Just sue him. Just take your 500 grand you have in your savings account and sue a corporation, right? Yeah, so I don't think I need to give the obvious disclaimer that you can definitely sue for wrongful termination if it's a very, very, very legitimate issue, obviously. Now, granted, we still run into the uh, the problem where you have to have the money, but still, but no, if you just go into overtime and you happen to get fired, yeah, you can't sue for that. You're not going to win, bro. You're going to step into the courtroom and uh, Walmart's going to be like, oh yeah, we don't know what's going on. They're like, yeah, they fired me for going into overtime. And then they're going to be like, oh, well, on our form, we listed it as insubordination that blanketed several issues that led up to termination. And then the judge is going to dismiss the case. But I, but I, but I, that's what, that's what happened. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point. Right. Okay. That's illegal. So yeah, not everyone can afford a lawyer, bro. You're so out of touch. So what you're saying is that because some people can't afford a lawyer and they can't get anything done, actually, to be, by the way, be fair, if this was actually true, any lawyer would take this case pro bono, which means they would take it for free and then just take a percentage of the settlement money because they... Man, this is fucked up. This is brutal. 
There's no one. I, I, it's very obvious as to why this video is so downvoted. Like, I don't want to be mean, but Asmon Gold's dumb as fuck. Uh, now, I shouldn't say he's dumb as fuck. I should say he's so out of touch that he has no idea what's going on. Any lawyer would just take a case? What the fuck are you talking about? Any lawyer would just take a case? What the fuck is he talking about? Has, has does this guy can, d he should probably Google what a like a lawyer. <laughs> like what Google any of this. Google any of this, like first, except for the income versus happiness, because you disproved yourself on that one. God, any lawyer would take this case pro bono. Wow. All right, here we go. <laughs> They would know that they could win this case very easily and get millions of dollars from the company. So that's actually not true, and it's not logical. And you could easily talk to any lawyer and figure this out immediately. So, <sighs> okay, here we go. Let's keep. Let's just. I'll just continue. Fuck it. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> oh, it's again just people that don't understand the topic at all. It's called contingency games. Yeah, of course. And I work eighty hours for two weeks, and I go to overtime because I know it'll make my check much bigger. So I keep going to make it more than eighty. Yeah, exactly. And so that's generally what happens. And I think that if you are working more and you're not being paid for the amount of time that you're working you're being taken advantage of. And if you're working an hourly wage and that's happening to you, you need to contact a lawyer and you need to file a lawsuit. And I guarantee you that the money that you're going to make from that lawsuit will vastly outweigh the money that you're not going to make from that job. Like these, these are like, I'm talking like seven figure lawsuits, eight figure lawsuits that these companies. Uh, so Asmund Gold unironically believes that you just declare Sue. He, he unironically believes that you just declare Sue and it will be a free lawsuit that the corporation will put off and delay for two to five years. And the lawyer will just use that possible uh, five-year time to do everything for free and uh, not put you on a retainer for four to five hundred grand. Okay. All right. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> have to pay out if this happens like for example walmart had this problem in like the 2010s like it's like somewhere around it's actually the year 2010 yeah that's the way it is and so enough to small business that you're suing yeah there are always going to be exceptions but i think in a general sense this is true and so uh let me explain that for you because uh as one gold definitely doesn't know about this either um every single year walmart has a class action lawsuit um settlement that goes out to employees that worked overtime or worked off the clock past 40 hours because some managers are assholes and they'll try to make it happen. They'll just try to force people because obviously there's a gajillion people that works at these stores. So not all of them are honest. So every single year, Walmart has like a couple million dollar class action lawsuit. You don't get a lot of money from this lawsuit. Every individual person that is involved in this class action lawsuit probably gets a thousand, two thousand, maybe dollars, maybe less. It will not be more than you make an entire year at this job. Like as gold says, why? Because he has no idea what he's talking about. He's just making shit up. Um, he's unironically is in his 30s or 40s. He looks like he's in his 40s. I don't really know how old he is. But he unironically at this age believes that you get millions of dollars when you sue. Um, and it's free and you just get it. And it happens instantaneously. And it definitely doesn't take five years uh, on a retainer with a lawyer. <laughs> well, there's, you know, well, this is a bad topic. He shouldn't have picked this topic, man. I'm a dumbass. I'm from Alabama and I can barely read. And this is, I, I can't even believe after it. I can, I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> Any lawyer would gladly take your money up front. <laughs> Arikas says problem with overtime is that people start delivery work slower. My dad started only giving overtime to actual performers and problem disappeared. Yep. Yep. And also your dad probably works a business that's not corporate, right? Um, overtime is probably more prevalent in family owned businesses. Corporations almost do not allow like overtime because obviously they they have overhead, they have profit margins, and they all take that into account. And they want almost no over overtime to affect that. That's what GameStop was like. That's what Walmart was like. Irikas, love you, dude. Twenty dollar gold boy. I mean, orange boy, my boy. Thank you. And in in a general sense, if you do work more, you will be paid more. Right. For most jobs and most ethical jobs. Are there unethical jobs that take advantage of you? Absolutely. Is that the norm? I don't think that's the norm. Hey. No, if not, lawsuit's going to pay a bill. So does anybody have an argument about why that's not true? So is there any form? I, I believe that there is a form of compensation that people do have to be paid with a salary as well. If they're working overtime, is that true entirely? I, I don't really no. entirely know every single law about this. No. I work salary and I get paid 2x my pay if I work overtime. Yeah. So there are some people that do have that. Some people. So I'll uh, allow you to understand what this law is. So there's a federal minimum for salary in the country 
Um, it was supposed to go up to 43,000 a couple years ago, but it got vetoed or something or voted down in the house. I don't remember. So it's, I think it's 28,000. I can't remember. You can Google the actual number. It's probably went up since then. Um, Companies are not required to pay you overtime if you make that minimum. So that's that you, if you don't make that minimum and you still work salary, you'll be compensated for overtime. Um, and of course there's probably individualistic companies that will pay overtime to certain salary members of their team. Um, it, there is no law in place that makes that required. So. Okay, let's hit the Super Chats real quick. Rye says, I live in Idaho. It's right at work. State of seeing companies look for a way to fire people because they are starting making too much an hour. Uh, then they get someone to take their place for less money. Uh, dude, I've made like 20 videos about this. GameStop had a program called Legacy Delete. They would fire employees who made over 40 grand a year and hire employees in at 28 grand a year. Legacy Delete. GameStop has been doing it for decades. But keep in mind, you can just get a lawyer for free to sue GameStop. For free. Because you know, lawyers are free. And they'll just do it because the lawyer gets money and you get money. <laughs> Chris the McGall. So they threw you out of the meetup after you paid tickets for a hotel. Are you fucking kidding me? They have become people they made a career whining about. I don't really know the story, man. Um, and uh, I've only talked to like one person. So, I mean, it, it could be something completely unrelated. I don't know. I, I look, All I'm saying is I'm going to be in Vegas. I just won't. I can't go to the meetup. I don't know the reason why. Um. Um, I've been told that like the tickets are sold out. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's whatever, dude. I'm, there's probably a legitimate reason why. I don't know. Um, I'll be there though. I'm going to be hanging out with all these people anyway. So I don't really know. I don't really get it. I don't know. Uh, like, so I don't really see the point, but Hey man, it's all good. Um, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to drink and have a good time and I'll hang out with fucking x-ray and Mark and everybody. It's going to be great, man. I'm excited. Thank you, Chris McGough. I love you. Squid. The entire trucking industry isn't subject to any of those laws. Overtime doesn't exist unless you're lucky uh, to be a local hourly paid trucker and also be a company that decides to off overtime. Yeah, truckers are completely different. Thank you so much. The Squid. I love you, dude. The Squid. You're the man, Squid. Dude, you guys are going ham as hell. We're closing in on double five milk. Well, they don't. And so, yeah, there's somebody, for example, that, that that's a good example. Yeah. You argue if a large company is not paying or doing it properly, overtime would be a class action lawsuit? Well, of course it would be. Yeah, absolutely. Differ uh, differences are millionaires that decide to work more because you want to. Well, what would it matter? Well, why would that matter? So if, if I'm talking about, so for example, like if I'm talking about, and I think this is really what the problem is that people have with this topic is that people are unwilling to accept that anybody that makes a lot of money is allowed to have any problems with their job. And I think that that's just generally the reality. It's that people are not willing to accept and they are not sympathetic and they don't care about what a person who's Again, this was not the original point. The original point was normal jobs are less um socially stressful than streaming we're we're in a completely different realm now now we're talking about how people are saying rich people have absolutely no problems with their job at all and it's super easy no i don't think anybody said that it's making a lot of money is, is having and i don't think that any actual logical investigation into my perspective will reveal me being wrong and i invite anyone out there any any content creator that wants to farm views please logically investigate my position and then provide the ways that I am inaccurate in what I'm saying. I have no problem. Yeah. Bro, I don't even... Is this motherfucker serious? <laughs> this motherfucker serious? Look, I don't even want to get into it, Um, but this this guy unironically just said you can sue any corporation for basically any reason, but he said if you work overtime and they don't pay you... um. But also, if they fire you for working overtime, you can hire any lawyer for free because lawyers will do it for free and you'll get millions of dollars. I can pull up probably 100 examples of that not being a thing, like with one Google search. Um, <laughs> that's, that's some dumbassery. That's definitely wrong. Um, I can talk to, I'll, I'll, I'll message a couple of lawyers that I know personally and ask them if they do free cases for people that want to sue a corporation. It's just free. Right? It's just free to, to get a lawyer. They'll just do it for free. Yeah, Sofax, that's pretty much the entire soul of this video is Asmongold saying all things are true all at once. 
Um, uh, uh, mm. Do 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 do. All right, we'll just read through this real quick and then we'll go back to it. Um, just real quick. It says a pro bono service is more than just free work. It's a volunteer contribution by an attorney of their specific legal, legal of their specific legal knowledge, skills, and abilities for the public good. Public good in, includes furthering access to the judicial system for citizens, righting social wrongs and injustices, advocating for those who have no voice and being strong for the weak in the face of the abuse. Pro bono work is often provided when there is no other viable option to rectify a situation. Many times the public and even attorneys forget pro bono services does not mean free because I want it to be. Um, what's up, Art the Clown? How you doing? Dude? Pro bono service is a moral or ethical duty an attorney fulfills for the betterment of their uh, community, not just a single individual served in one case. While pro bono services often benefits an individual in a specific case, that service benefits the community by making it a better place for all citizens. So right there, we can take this one sentence. A lawyer would be less likely to take a case on an individual versus a giant class action lawsuit, which you can actually see uh, in uh, what's that show that was kick ass. Better call Saul, right? with the uh, retirement home deal. This is why we most commonly hear or uh, see pro bono services in cases involving abused children, domestic violence, and combat veterans. Society is harmed as a whole when we do not protect our children, stop violence against women or children, or serve the needs of those who protect us. There are two general misconceptions about pro, no, pro bono service. All attorneys must do pro bono service. Not true. If you don't have any money, an attorney will handle your case for free. Not true. Um, more than any other profession, attorneys openly pressure each other to provide pro bono service, and the public openly expects attorneys to prove it, provide it. However, there's no legal requirement uh, attorneys provide pro bono service. Pro bono service is generally done out of the self-imposed moral and ethical obligation of the legal profession. Sometimes individuals are given an attorney for free. These include individuals accused of crimes uh, or individuals subject to civil proceedings. These are uh, like defense lawyers that are provided to you by the state. Um when you ask an attorney to case, take your case for free, you're asking the attorney not to only work for free, but to support their staff in doing so. A request for pro bono services is like a request for a charitable contribution. Like any person asked to give a char charitable contribution, an attorney must weigh the amount of work your case may require um, uh, the requested charitable contribution against your resources or options for resolution elsewhere. Your ability to assist in the matter, your ability to pay the cost associated with your case, the firm's resources available in your case, and the public good in the community if they take your case pro bono. Not every request for free work deserves pro bono service. And unfortunately, even if the case deserves pro bono service, not every attorney is in the position, position to do so. That brings up a great point. So right there, we can pretty much come to the conclusion that most attorneys won't do pro bono service for an individual. And that in the, if it is done for an individual, it's going to be in abuse cases versus women um, or abuse cases versus children which makes a lot of sense. Um, the issue with this is a pro bono case is also going to include all the research, all the staff fees, the pay for the staff, because you got to keep paying your staff and you're using time away from other clients to pay or to do a service for free that doesn't pay your staff, which you are obligated to do so. And also, also court fees that go along with it, which you will just have to be paying for your client. That is, for some reason, suing Walmart because they think they were fired for working overtime. You know? So, no. <laughs> no. Um, I'm pretty... I, 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 Asmongold claims that every single lawyer would take this case for free because there's millions of dollars involved, which sounds kind of like what a 12-year-old would say. I'm going to be completely transparent. Um, and right here it says... Where'd it go? Um, 
Pro, those okay, so a pro bono case would need to benefit the individuals or the the benefit the community by making it a better place, which includes uh, children, domestic violence, and combat veterans. Society is harmed. You're not improving society because you think you got wrongfully terminated, and now you're going to be in a five year lawsuit, which is going to cost five hundred grand. Um, and your attorney's just doing it all for free, unless you're getting like a billion dollar attorney, I guess. So that's the most important thing is it takes so long to do these things. And again, um, again, um, Asmon Gold has the perspective uh, where you just declare sue, right? Like I sue, I declare sue. So you just get money. And that's a lot of people have that perspective. That's why you'll always see people um, uh, recommending you sue people. I've seen people do it all. Dude, you should sue so-and-so because they said some shit online. I'm like, dude, I'm not spending 200 grand to sue somebody. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'll just let them say shit. The hell? Um, just got here. How are the goals? How are goals, Mathiel? We killed everything. We're 200 away from double fight milk, my man. Thank you, Mathiel. Mathiel, Mathiel, Mathiel. Um, we're going to go through all the super chats that are mo monster again. Um, so it's going to be cool as hell. So I'm excited. All right, here we go. Um, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, I, I have no problem putting myself out there because that's see the thing is like I, I don't have a problem with people making videos about this or, or getting mad about this or anything because i do think that i am logically right i think that what i am saying is true and while there are the existence of jobs that do take advantage of people these jobs are generally seen as being very very bad oftentimes illegal and there are lawsuits that happen all the time and also i think that there are a lot of people that whenever they do work over how many of you guys get over content He should put, uh, I think he should put polls up in his chat because just asking people how much people get overtime pay, um, the people that do are going to say they do and the people that don't aren't going to say anything. Um, it's kind of like a, it's, it's a, it's kind of like a, a happiness surveys in corporations. Um, I feel like a, a, a poll works better for this kind of thing because everybody that is is going to say yes and everybody that doesn't won't say anything, right? Angry customers will give you a bad survey. Happy customers won't say anything, right? Okay, so that's my point. So again, um, I have no problem with people saying that I'm wrong. See, like, see, I gotta be real, real honest. This is so disingenuous. <laughs> like, it's kind of blowing my mind because for, for so many years, I've thought Asmund Gold was like a really level-headed dude. Um, he asked his chat, how many of you get overtime pay? Three people said yes. And he's like, ah, see, that's my point. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I see people in my chat saying, oh, I've sued people before. Anecdotal, your anecdotal data and your example or your, your one anecdotal experience is not the rule. It's the exception, right? If that was true, every single person that got fired from a corporation because managers are psycho would be both millionaires right now, and none of them are. There's a very small percentage of these people that have done this. I have no issue with that. And I invite anybody who thinks that I am incorrect in my analysis of these things to express themselves and explain how. I don't have a large ego. I'm doing it right now. He doesn't have a large ego, but he thinks you're emotionally unstable if you disagree with him. Keep that in mind. Um, it's weird. It's a very weird video I'm watching. Um. He keeps saying, if anybody wants to disagree, come up here and disagree with me and explain why that I'm wrong because I'm not. And I'm like, here's 50,000 ways you're wrong. <laughs> I don't know. About this position, to be honest with you, I think that I'm right. But if somebody provides like evidence, then I will reevaluate what I think. You're going to straight and speak on rap and super controversial topics and complain about it being draining because you're arguing with thousands of viewers? Um. Well, yeah, yeah, it is draining. Of course it, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course it can be draining. But I still, I still show up every day. And also, like, when was the last time, like, I really complained about my stream? I feel like I've pretty much stopped doing that. When do, when do I complain about my stream? Today? Really? You think that I'm, I, I haven't complained about it at all. No, I, I, I love my stream. I don't think he has complained about it on this stream. I was looking forward to start my stream today, like, all day. No, yeah, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not about that at all. That's what I'm spamming, talking over. Uh, I think you made the point, not certain. Uh, not to complain. Yeah, I, I do make it a point not to complain about my stream uh, because I know that people think this and I know that people uh, people actively live in, uh, I guess, what, what's the word for it? Like uh, people live in a sense of constant frustration that they see people like Hassan or people like me 
and they're like, well, these people are in a very good position, and I don't want to hear these people complain about their position at all because my position is very bad. And I, I understand that. Now, this is, in my opinion, I, I understand it. Um, I agree. Uh, I I don't want to hear these people complain about their job. And the, I'll say this. I'll say this. When I first started streaming on YouTube and having a lot of success, I got in really weird down periods. And I'm sure, Al Guang, you probably remember this. I had like every stream I did. It was like a sad boy stream. Remember that? I was like, oh, sad. I'm stupid fat. You remember that? I look back on that shit and I cringe so hard because I don't know if it's because I aged or what the fuck happened, but I'm, I'm so thankful for what, where my life is right now. I'm so happy like of how things have been going. Even in, dude, I, I get less views right now than everything else. Um, I get more views on my streams than ever, but I get less views on my videos, which is fun. Um, streams are what I like to do anyway, but I like videos, but streams are what I like to do. And I look back on those times when I was like being gay and I'm like, oh man, that was gay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I don't like, you know, I don't like the, especially millionaire streamers. I'm not a millionaire, right? Um, so yeah, I agree with that. Um, anyways, uh, where am I? Hold on. There's a red boy. I wish I had an alert button. Meh, meh. There's a red boy and it's Darth, Darth Chaz, Darth Chaz. Oh my God. T.S.P. Appalachia, California. I'm going to drop video in Vegas that you finished the race. My boy, Darth Chaz is going on the car right now. Darth Chaz. Thank you so much, my beautiful friend. We are now less than 150 from our 100. I don't, we're at 1.3, whatever. I don't know what the number is. Decimal places. I think, I feel like, I wish YouTube Studio would fix that, but it's whatever. Um, thank you so much. I love you, Darth Chaz. I don't deserve your love, but I really appreciate that. We're kicking ass today, and it's all because of you crazy bastards. Keep in mind, Friday, next Friday, March 8th, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, I'll be racing in my first NASCAR deal. It's the Arkham Menard Series um, right before the cup race. Friday, the day before the cup race, I think, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Watch it live. I'll be in a blue, I'll be in a purple car, 06 car. I'll pull it up here later and you can see the car. So it's very shiny. Darth Chaz, I love you. Jedi Knight says, Asmondi is usually based at Eric Jalaki. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I I feel like I've watched Asmond go for a long time. Um, I've never dissected anything, but yeah. Um, I don't know. He uh, there's a lot of stuff he said in here that's really just fucking brain dead. Um, the lawyer thing was brain dead as fuck. Uh, that was the worst thing so far. But there, you know, some other things. You know how um, he went from saying I believe this thing to now I believe all aspects of every version of the thing, which means he can't be wrong technically. Um, which I don't really care for. It's disingenuous. Own what you said first, but. Now he's saying, oh, all jobs can be hard depending on who you are and all jobs can be easy depending on who you are. And I'm like, okay, well, now you can't be wrong. All numbers are a number of some sort. Right? That's kind of like, what, that's the argument. Well, all numbers are, are numbers, you know? And you're like, oh, you but motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I, I, to be honest with you, I really don't respect it. I'm sorry, but I, I actually, I, I don't respect feeling that way because it's an emotional perspective that's selfish. And I think that anybody out in the world has a right to own their own problems and nobody else in the world has the right to take that away from them. And I really dislike this idea that because some person has it bad, they try to go out of their mind, out of their way to invalidate other people who have other problems that they deem less important. I think this is an incredibly toxic way of talking. It's an incredibly toxic way of looking at the world. And at the end of the day, I think that we're all very privileged in a lot of cases. That's why we're sitting on here with high-speed internet, probably in most of the cases. Yeah, um, this is a completely different point, but I agree with this. Um, I hate when people trauma dump and try to say that their situation is worse than yours, no matter what situation it is. So I, I agree with this. Um, I don't like when people are like, oh, well, you think you have it bad. Here's what I, where it's going on in my life. And I'm like, okay, like you don't have to one-up me on your like fucking trauma, right? Because like when I was in my 20s and I'm like, damn, dude, like I'm not gonna be able to pay for this car payment. I'm gonna sell my car. And people are like, oh, you think you have it bad? Well, my whole family just died again because I, I've had, um, what is it? Pathological liars for, for friends back in the day. And they would just like say their 
parents died like five times. I'm like, bro, I, your, your parents haven't died five times. <laughs> There's air conditioned houses in a first world country in many cases as well, according to my analytics, having conversations about this kind of stuff. We are all incredibly privileged, at least according to many other people in the world. So I try to have empathy for other people's perspectives and I try to see how other people feel. And I try to look past what the words people are saying are and then actually listen to where they're trying to get at and what they're trying to Except for your chat. If they disagree, they're emotionally unstable for the fourth time. Fine to say. So no, I do not respect the position that people will just dislike you because you're expressing that you're unhappy or stressed out. I do not respect this position at all. However, I know that many people have it. Yeah, uh, but you're a millionaire complaining about your uh, job to mostly middle-class viewers. It's not the right place to bitch about your job. Um, I think I think actually here's the truth. I think that people don't want to hear someone bitch about their job. No, actually, I think that you're right, but it actually has nothing to do with a, a class thing. I was actually having this conversation today. Uh, I was talking to like Amy and Tekton about it. Um, imagine like you go to the store and the cashier is talking to you about how much they hate their job. This would be kind of uncomfortable, right? Imagine you're getting your hair cut and you're having somebody tell you like as they're cutting your hair, how much they hate cutting hair and how frustrating it is for them and how much they don't want to do it. This would probably be weird and you wouldn't like that, right? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. So I actually... No, I, I disagree. I don't care. If uh, the lady at McDonald's working the cashier is like, God, oh, this job's terrible. I'd be like, yeah, I bet it is, baby. I completely disagree. <laughs> I completely disagree with this. No, if, if somebody like that has a shit job is complaining to me that job shit, I'm going to be like, yeah, I agree. It probably is. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, Nada says, Cody must have a nice car to have missed payments on. This was a long time ago. I didn't miss payments. I would I would just like fucking scrape by. So I I had a 03 Mustang Terminator. The monster. Um and uh yeah, I couldn't really afford it, so I sold it. I didn't miss payments. Like I'm really I try to make sure my credit's not dead. We don't think that this is a class barrier thing. I think that it's something that is just as simple as people want the monkey to do the thing that they're paying the monkey to do. That's all there is to it. And whether it's uh streaming, whether it's uh playing you know, a sport, whether it's uh, working at a gas station, whether it's anything. Dan Here's my retort to this whole ramble. No, completely disagree. Um, people don't want to hear millionaire streamers complaining about their job. I agree with that. That is not the same thing as somebody, I don't want to hear the cashier at McDonald's complain about their job. What? No, no, no. It's because McDonald's sucks. That's why they're complaining. And I will be in complete agreeance with them into their face. I'm like, hell yeah, McDonald's probably sucks ass. Thanks for the McDouble, baby. I hope it gets better for you. I know it sucks, right? The difference is millionaire streamer. <laughs> millionaire streamer versus cashier at McDonald's. One of them definitely has more of a right to be mm, kind of pissed about their job. You know, um, and not only McDonald's, uh, fucking uh, there. Everybody that works there is usually fucking awful. God, you ever worked at a restaurant? If there's always like the really angry, like bitch old lady that's like 40 and she's just mean as a snake to everyone. And that's her personality. I'm an asshole. Then eh? there's like the old people, you know, so. It's gross. It's gross. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Dance monkey dance. That's the way it is. We don't pay you. You absolutely do. You're watching me. You're paying me. I'm making money off of you one way or another. That's a wild statement with that on preaching screen. I mean, it's just, listen, if people want to turn this into some weird shit, go ahead. But I think that any person, especially them, they totally understand what I'm saying. I think that they, they definitely would agree. I think they would agree with me is that whenever they pay somebody money, they don't want to have somebody go and talk about their life problems, right? It, no, this is completely wrong. You're not paying the cashier at McDonald's paycheck. You're paying the register which goes towards profit margins for the corporation of McDonald's. You're not paying a cashier money. <laughs> like, I'm paying you to not talk about your problems. No, streamers maybe. People that own their own like practice, I guess, like for certain medical things. Tattoo artists maybe. Not, uh, you're not a corporate employee. He's talking in a perspective of Karen. Karens are like this. They hate retail associates that like say anything out of the way. That's what he's talking about. I pay you. Don't fucking talk to me. That's what he's talking about. A lot of Karens that would come into GameStop, they, uh, they had this weird perspective that I made money off of like their profit. 
I'm never coming to your store again. I'm like, that doesn't fucking affect me. Like they would always say that as if they were like, well, I'm never coming here again. Okay. That doesn't hurt me. Right. You ever heard somebody say that to you? I'm never coming here again. Okay. Well, I don't make money off this shit. You dumb bitch. I get paid a paycheck. Right. So no, this is completely ass backwards. He thinks that he thinks the same way Karen's do. They pay people money and it goes to them. The, the GameStop employee does not get your money. <laughs> They thought it was our product, our store. Yeah, I'll go on exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Moto is dead, says. I'm so proud how far you've come. Thank you, Moto is dead. I love you. I appreciate you. It's all because of you guys. Let's be completely honest. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you, Moto. Uh, Jedi, as mom worked in retail. That's how I know he's lying. <laughs> Thank you. All right, here we go. They just want to very easily and simply have this person do the thing that they were paying the money to do. And I think that people view streamers as the same thing. So they don't want to hear streamers complain, but I also don't think that you want to hear a cashier complain. I don't think you want to hear a hairdresser complain. I don't think you're not paying a cashier money. You're paying the corporation money that the cashier works at. So this is not this, this is a completely different example. You want to pay a cashier to not hear him complain? No, you're not paying the cashier. You're paying GameStop. You're paying Walmart. The streamer that you donate to, you're paying that streamer. This is that is not even kind of the same thing. Again, he says, I implore other creators to tell me where I'm wrong. Again, he's wrong in the very next thing he's talking about. He's been wrong a lot in this show. And I've said where he's, I agree with him and he's right. This is completely unequivocally not the same thing at all. <laughs> not even kind of the same thing. No, I disagree. You're not paying a cashier. You're paying Walmart. Right? Streamers. You're, you're paying the streamer. You know? So. Also, we, no one wants to hear a millionaire complain. That's kind of what it boils down to think you want to hear anybody complain because the truth is is you probably don't really care about their problems you don't give a shit you just want to get your thing done that's it so yeah i i do understand that do i respect that no i don't i really don't because i think it's an unempathetic perspective but i totally understand it does that make sense and sometimes i feel that way too it's, it's like yeah the levels of disconnected people like why should we feel any sympathy or give a shit about what your struggles is you're literally choosing it that's like you do it for money and then complaining it hurts wow this slap was hard slap that's true Yep, you're right. And, and there are always going to be negative effects to doing anything. I don't think it's bad for somebody to talk about the negative effects that they have uh, from doing something. Softer. <laughs> no, no one's saying that someone can't talk about the negative effects of doing something. The original point, again, for the 37th time, was streaming is harder in uh, socially and in other ways than normal jobs. That was the original point. Um, it is not that you're not allowed to talk here about your problems. No one has ever said that, but... That's now Asmongold's point at this point of his argument is now he's in, implying that people are claiming that someone said they couldn't ever talk about their problems again. No, that was never in the equation, never in the point. He's changing it slightly so he can't be wrong anymore. That's the whole point here. <gasps> Laughing man. What's up, dude? A baguette, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't slap yourself, dumbass. Nobody cares. You have a job. Now, he's right. He is right. He's fucking right about that. He is. And that's what it comes down to. But I think nobody cares is true for everything. I don't think that the streaming element is anything that's that special. You've said that a million times. Yes. And remember the last time I said nobody cares? Oh, nobody liked that. But now whenever they say it, everybody's like, yeah. But you know what? They're right now and I was right then. It's true. It's true. I disagree. Um, I don't think that uh, everybody lacks empathy 100% across the board. I mean, Asmongold definitely does. You can see it in his personal life, um, his streaming. But um, I think that some people generally do like feel kind of bad when they see a cashier that's fucking run down. Now, look, I'm not going to pull out any stops to try to make their life better, but I'm going to be like, damn, that sucks for them, man. It sucks. I say that all the time. Going to a place and I see a freaking a, a employee getting drilled. I'm like, dude, that sucks for that person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't go. No, nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I don't do that. That's weird. I think generally people like feel empathy if somebody's in a bad spot. Now, if you do something about it, I think more people more people than not wouldn't, obviously. But extremely gifted and privileged. Nobody cares. You choose your hours. Shut the yeah. fuck about your problems. And certainly, if you're gonna talk about it, don't compare yourself to regular people. I'm just even, I'm even gonna throw OnlyFans, only fan models in there. Uh -oh, uh oh. And all the exporters and stuff like that. Because what they have to do to make the money that we shut the fuck up. Yes. <laughs> I and do you remember whenever I said before these dudes made the video, I said that people said the same thing about OnlyFans girls too? 
He gets really, really happy when he when when he perceives somebody agreeing with him. <laughs> he gets fucking ecstatic. Look at him; he's so happy about this. Oh, dude, I doubt. But when people disagree, they're uh, un unhinged and emotionally unstable. <laughs> I I put I put the OnlyFans girls in the same category. Yep, because everybody fucking knows it. But the reality is, like, whenever a girl like Amarath is talking about, like, oh yeah, some guy tried to burn my house down, I can sympathize with that being bad. That's horrible. That's terrible that that happened to you. That. Okay, you guys ready? You guys ready? Are you ready? When Amaranth says someone burned her or tried to burn her house down, he can sympathize. You guys want to scroll back 20, uh, 20 minutes into the video where somebody said my house burned down and I'm in a bad spot and he was completely threw it to the side and said, that has nothing to do with anything. Your situation has nothing to do with anything. Remember? I don't really think he sympathizes with it. Unless you're a millionaire creator. Then he does sympathize with you. Interesting. You guys remember that chat from earlier? When somebody said, my house burnt down. I'm in a bad spot. This sucks. And he's like, oh. and he just like shit on him. He didn't say, oh, dude, that sucks, bro. Just shit on him. <laughs> Ooh. My God, bro. That's really, really bad. Really? Do that. Nope. Shout out to them. Turn it off. The shit that they would have to do to make that amount. Shut up. Do you guys realize? Oh my literally, days. if they wanted to, this is something that you regular people can't do because yeah. you're literally going to lose your homes. You know what they need to do just to solve all their problems? Not do it. That's the third. Do it again. Do it again. Do the white balance. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Someone actually said real job. I really wish they would cut to the part where, do you remember what I said that was the same thing? I said that if you're getting cyberbullied or you're getting upset, turn your chair around and then realize that it's not real. No, I think it's definitely true. I agree with them. Yeah, absolutely. What does that mean? Oh, yeah, I used to do the that right you right have now. bullshit jobs are the ones that other people have. It's just that simple. It is. No, no. Okay, this is what I don't understand if these people ever work. What a bullshit no. job is a job where you are paid to literally just exist. You're a number. Like, if you've ever worked for the government. You're not being paid to exist. See, this is, this is actually, I'm going to completely disagree with him here. You are not being paid to exist. You are being paid to be a conduit for advertising. You stopped too early? Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'll keep going. There's a lot of bullshit jobs there. Why? Because the government just got money to spend. They got to meet certain quotas. So they literally hire people. I've been told this at my job. You're there to look busy. Do you know how fucking crazy that is? That is a bullshit job. I could get my eight hours of work done. I heard that after they changed. Um, no, no, he does have a point with this. He does. I, I, And like, if he wants to look at it from that perspective, I actually can't argue with that. Because I remember that I think this happened during like the unionization of railroads. And after some like railroads and like trains moved from being like coal to having some other type of like power, they had the unions that had the guys that put the coal in the train, even though they would still sit on the train and get paid a full fucking wage for doing nothing. And so, yeah, I, I yeah, that's uh, I don't really have an opinion on this. Although uh, when he says, I think that there was a time back in history when a thing happened, I can't take it seriously because he's been wrong about so many things where he just says, oh, a thing probably happened. It's probably a law. Like, no, no. Lawyers aren't taking your case for free, bro. <laughs> That's, I, I hate to say it. That is kind of, it is kind of a bullshit job. But they aren't complaining. I don't know. But in two hours. But I uh -huh. have to not do that so I can look busy throughout. Or else yeah. if I finish it too fast, I'm too productive. Either they give me another bunch of bullshit work. Yeah. Or they'll just literally tell me you're reprimanded for not doing your job. What the but fuck is that? That is what it's called a bullshit job. This is what happened. Like, I had this at the IRS. Uh, I had this at GameStop. Um, They wanted you to... They wanted you. They wanted you to walk around the store and like act like, act like you're uh, alphabetizing, right? They wanted you to act like you were alphabetizing, even though everything was alphabetized. So yeah, that's the same shit. <gasps> Kevon Javid, love you, my man. Appreciate you, dude. Kevon Javid with thirty months, my boy. Uh, whenever you would finish all of your work, if you finished it early, sometimes we just got to sit around and do fucking nothing. But really, the reward for finishing all of your work is that now you have to do other people's work. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yep. Those exist. Those exist in huge numbers. And then there's real jobs. They're not the same thing. He makes thousands of dollars a day. I'm trying him making I, I do think that like in that case, he's right. Um, I was more or less referring to the idea that being a streamer isn't like is a bullshit job or anything like that. Uh, and, and you're not really being paid to exist. I think that a streamer is effectively being paid to be a conduit for advertising. That's the main way that streamers make money. Trying to relate to normal working people is fucking stupid. Well, there are normal working people that also make thousands of dollars oh, a day. He's not gonna like this. So like I don't really understand like what your point is. <laughs> To be fair, to be fair, I get it, guys. I get it. You know what I said? You know what I said? I was clearly referring to people that did not work in entertainment. 
There are many people who do not work in entertainment who make thousands of dollars a day. Do you genuinely believe that I honestly think that the average normal person makes thousands of dollars a day? Of course, I do not honestly believe that a normal person. I actually thought he was going to defend this better. <laughs> like I thought he was going to, when he was like, okay, look, I know what I said. I thought he was going to be like, oh, okay, he was going to roll it back. No, he's just saying he, he went back to his original defense for the whole video. There are some people that exist that make thousands of dollars a day. Yes, there are some people that exist that have uh, prosthetic legs. Yes, there are some people that exist that buy cars with cash. Yes. There's some people that exist that have an eye patch. Yes. That's kind of like where we're at in, with the, with his, his, uh, copes. His copes are, it is true for someone. Therefore, what I said technically isn't wrong. That's kind of what we're talking about. Makes thousands of dollars a day. In the context of what I was saying, I was talking about people that worked in entertainment. And I said that people that work outside of entertainment some of them also make thousands of dollars a day. And it's not only people that work in entertainment that make this much money. That's it. I get it. I get it. I could have said it better. All right. I, I, I could have said it better. That That's, you know, I, 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 I yeah, yeah, yeah. Good night, Polly. I love you. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I don't know what working people, you know, the, the normal working people that are making thousands of dollars. <laughs> you guys know what thousands of dollars a day is? Let's have granted. Let's say Dollars a day. Yeah. Do you know how much that is over the course of a whole month? That's a lot. That's nine thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Nobody. You think there's people out here? Nobody does that. Making anywhere from sixty to seven, making close to a million a year. Nobody. Does Absolutely. That. Yeah. I processed ten forties. Yes, one percent. You understand that one percent out of a country of three hundred million people is millions of people, right? That's not normal people. No, they're not. See <clears throat> <laughs> let's see um i'm just uh looking just looking real quick um, um um Um, making $1 million a year puts you in the top 0.1% of income earners in the world. Um, oh, in, in America. Um, to be in the top 1%, you'd have to reach around 800,000. So, no, no, <laughs> no. I don't know. Maybe I have a different perspective on what 1% is. But I think that 1% is a big number. What do you mean you have a different perspective of what 1% is? <laughs> I have a different perspective on what emotionally affects me when I don't get my distributor timing right on the engine that I just got rebuilt for my car. You don't have a different perspective on what... Per one percent is one percent of a number is one percent of the number it's not seven or 0.04 it's not subjective <laughs> it's not... all right well whatever fuck it we'll just go we'll just keep going i do i think one percent is a very large number sometimes i'm gonna do that uh, stop. this is the problem okay and this is what streamers yeah. and content creators okay your job okay is it difficult maybe yes sure nobody cares shut the fuck up about it you want to know why true True, 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 so true. But I don't think it has anything to do with being a streamer. I don't think anybody gives a fuck about anybody else's job. In some cases, people pretend to. I think this is the case with everybody's job. And you see this all the time. I completely disagree. No. Um, maybe uh, Asmongold has negative 1,000% empathy. Uh, I, I don't think most people do. On the internet. Because you're well compensated, mm -hmm. extremely well compensated for the level of difficulty of your job. And this is how most people internalize this and whether or not they want to hear about your suffering. Mm -hmm. How difficult is your job? How well do you get compensated for it? If your job is extremely difficult mm -hmm. and hard to manage, 
but you get paid peanuts complain as you want i will i don't think so i i think that actually i don't agree with that because if you look at for example like culturally i think that culturally people definitely look down on construction workers they look down on sanitation workers absolutely that's true and they get paid shit and what does he mean look down on them what does that have to do with them being able to complain about their job this is a different thing entirely they have to work harder than anybody else I think fast food workers or the sanitation people don't get paid shit, by the way. They actually get paid really well. The most true as well. A hundred percent. So I, I don't think that society actually has this perspective. Bad take, I think. Uh, construction is very well paid. Uh, it depends. But yeah, in some cases, that's the case. In some cases, it's not. There are a lot of question marks. In some cases, that's the case. In some cases, it's not. We've reached the uh, overall... Uh, atmosphere of the video again yeah it, it's true and it's not true it's in the chat people are unhappy about this okay let me ask you a different question that has the same outcome whenever you were in high school how many of you were made to think that if you didn't go to college you kind of just didn't really make it 100 percent. me yes that's what i'm talking about you understand? I don't like this thing he does where he just says say yes or no in the chat and then he reads a couple and says something. But I can agree. Uh, I, every single person, uh, every teacher, every body said you had to go to college to be successful. My parents did not at all. Um, they said I should go to college, but if I don't, like, they're not going to not support me. My parents were really, really laid back, man. That, but I know, I know tons of friends where their parents were like militant about college militant stand that i'm just saying it in a different direction this is again it's intellectual dishonesty here people aren't trying to listen to what i'm saying the point the point is that in society people look down on those jobs and i actually don't think society has a genuine i disagree um i don't think people look down on sanitation i think uh white girls that are in their 20s do um like college college educated white women probably look down on it i don't think anybody else does i don't i've never looked down on a sanitation worker at all um I don't know many jobs I look down on. I really, to be honest, streamers. <laughs> Respect for how difficult the job is versus how much people get paid. And I think the evidence for that is the fact that people generally look down on fast food workers. And I think working in fast food and working in the kitchen is harder than almost anything. Sure. I, it, I, it, working in the kitchen, in my opinion, is harder than streaming. It's, in, it, it, it's like there is almost no. Yeah, working in the kitchen is definitely harder than streaming. Yeah, sure. I agree with that. I agree, Asmongo. <laughs> For sure. Chris says people look down on retail people. Sure. Yeah, I think they do. Um, they treat them so terribly. <laughs> uh, as a retail worker of 11 years and even in district manager situations, but 11 years working. Dude, I got yelled at a lot for shit that didn't matter and didn't make sense. So, yeah, people definitely look down on retail. I don't look down on them, but of course, I, I definitely women do. <laughs> Old women. They hate retail workers. Dude. <laughs> Old women. They fucking hate retail workers. They wish they could fist fight every damn one of them. Come on, Javad. I love you, dude. Thank you. Revenge says, imagine if Hasman Gold was that black school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kara says, it took me years ago now. I'm on path to prove to people that another option exists besides college. 100%. I mean, I'm right here with you, Karis. By the way, shout out to Karis. I love you, dude. Can't wait to see that logo on that purple ass car. I think it's going to match really well. Um, yeah, I same thing. I never went to college. I didn't even graduate high school. Granted, my situation is very, very atypical, and I got very, very lucky. So, other job that I would rather like, I would rather do almost any other job in the entire world than work in a kitchen. It's soul crushing. Yeah, it's fucking brutal. And nobody respects those people at all. Are we really going to pretend that people respect fast food workers? Because they don't. And you don't respect them, but I don't look down on them. I don't, I have a hard time looking down on anybody that works, to be honest. Maybe lawyers, <laughs> actors, for sure. Can you clarify? Abba's argument, society looks down on those jobs. I think he was talking about an individual's ability to complain. Well, uh, can you clarify? Yeah, I I'll, I'll talk about this just for a second, just so you can understand what I'm saying. So Abba's argument that society looks down on those jobs. Is Abba's argument that society looks down on those jobs? Yes, I think he's implying that. And so like, if, if you let's listen just for a minute and we'll, we'll, we'll go through it. How well do you get? Well, it, it, it's his argument is that they don't. And I think that they do. Sorry, uh, excuse me. His argument is that basically- Politicians, Kawi, politicians, 100% look down on all them fuckers. Fuck them you have a right to complain if you are not being paid a lot of money but your job is really hard that's what he's saying right i just want to understand what like I, damn art clown you fucking with me right now jesus Ugh. just want to make sure that we're all clear 
So he's saying that if you make a lot of money and you don't work very hard, you don't have the right to complain. But if you do make a lot, if you don't make a lot of money and you do work very hard, then you do have the right to complain. And I think that he's arguing this from a social norms perspective, because that's the only way that you can argue something like this, right? Yeah. Because he's saying like, this is what's okay societally and what's not. And I, I disagree with that. I don't think that's true. And I think that the cultural value that people put on fast food workers and sanitation workers and uh, what was the third one I used? Oh, construction workers uh, is evidence for the fact that I don't think that's really true. Honest I don't, uh, I, I feel like those are completely unrelated. Um, random people may be looking down on a sanitation worker, which I don't really see as a thing. Um, does it mean they don't care about their struggles in life? I just think in this situation, the perspective of Asmongold is he lacks pretty much any empathy. To be fair, he doesn't really care about himself. He doesn't really care about other people. Um, he's been sitting in a room for like 15 years and doesn't even really take care of himself. So, I mean, uh, taking his like empathetic moral like perspective, it's probably pretty brutal. Uh, it probably is, it probably is pretty detached. The societal level. And I think that the evidence that a lot of us have experienced that kind of proves that is the fact that whenever many of us went to high school, these types of jobs were referred to as not really making it. You're confusing hard work with shitty work. Fast food isn't difficult to do. It just sucks because the pay is trash. I completely disagree with you. I think that working in a kitchen is more physically straining than almost any other job. I totally disagree with you. I actually think that working in a kitchen and working in one of these fast food places is incredibly straining. It's really, really fucking hard. You're so disconnected. So I've worked fast food before and it it is it does suck ass. Um, I worked it for like two months and I quit. I was like, fuck this. Um, Asmon Gold's never worked fast food. I don't. So what does he think? What is he talking about? Unless I'm wrong. Um, he said he only ever worked at the IRS for like a summer. I don't, I don't, unless he has, I guess I could be wrong. I don't think he, I don't think, I don't know how he'd know. Um, I don't, whatever. Connected from reality, it's quite entertaining. Can you explain how I'm disconnected? Can you explain that? Can you, can we explain why Asmongold's disconnected from reality? Um, he thinks lawyers will take individualistic cases that are not abuse or domestic abuse cases against children or women, which are typically pro bono cases. Um, he thinks any lawyer uh, in the U.S. will take a case completely for free if you're suing not a class action lawsuit, an individualistic case. If you're suing a corporation and you will get awarded millions of dollars over the course of several years and the lawyer will pay for all of his staff fees and everything else possible out of their own pocket. Um, that is the com most complete ass backwards thing I've ever heard as an, an adult human being. Um, other things, um, he claims that no one has any empathy at all for anybody in a bad situation as far as their their job. Um, I completely disagree with that. I don't think there's many people that would actually say that. <laughs> um, so um, he also says he can sympathize with Amaranth, somebody trying to burn down her house, but he also completely, um, completely uh, shit on somebody in his chat in the beginning of the video that said their house burnt down, so they're in a bad spot. Um, so those are two com conflicting ideas. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. Um, and I've already forgot like the first four things that I completely disagree with, but those are the most recent things I can remember. You're someone aware? No, no, no I, I have no problem. Try working on an oil rig. Oh yeah, no, you're definitely right. There are, there are jobs that are harder. I, I, yeah. I mean, did I say it was the hardest? I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Sorry. Working in a kitchen is the hardest thing you can do. No, I don't think it's the hardest thing you can do. Um, but it is incredibly physically taxing. And I think that it is more physically taxing than they than the vast majority of jobs. Of course, there are jobs that are more physically taxing than working in a kitchen. But I do think that working in a kitchen is in like, it's like if you want to have like a tier list, it's in like the A tier. And if not in the A tier, in some places, it's probably in the low S tier in terms of like most stressful. I'm going to go up post after getting caught. Well, no, I mean, sometimes I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm talking extemporaneously, right? So like maybe I might say a word that's incorrect. Sure. Why is this even an argument? Well, no, no, it, it's not. I'm just trying to have a conversation. I mean, obviously I, I might've misstated something, but it's not really a big deal, is it? So, so if I'm, okay, all right, you type. You make a lot of assumptions based on no experience of the examples that you use, but your opinion is yours and mine is mine. No, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to go and say this and then not have an example. Where is the example? I want you to tell me what I said that makes me, why, why can't you just do that? Um, he claims that any lawyer in the U.S. will take an individualistic case not based on domestic abuse against children or women, pro bono, completely free, not on a clash action lawsuit, and get awarded millions of dollars. And any lawyer would do it because it's free, free money, because money rains from the skies and the heavens, um, because you can just declare sue when you open your window and just say, I declare sue, and then you get money, um, a check to your house within 48 hours, apparently. 
Um, but I don't think he's our, he's ever sued a corporation pro bono um, for wrongful termination. So there's a good example. I think that's the best example right there. So I declare sue. I declare sue. Just back up your point. If if I'm you make if I make a lot of them, then you can think of one example, right? Let's you can watch people give examples in his chat, but he only focuses on the person that's not given an example yet. Right. Think of one example. I had fast food at 15 at McDonald's Burger King. It wasn't hard or physically taxing, hence why all young kids do it. I don't think that's a very good argument because I think that young kids are probably in the best shape to be able to do stuff like that, especially with having to bend over and pick stuff up all the time. I think that it would make sense that young people would do that. It's the same reason why young people are in the military. Well, you did say fast food first and kitchen jobs. There are kitchen jobs that are physically taxing, but I wouldn't say fast food kitchens are part of that. I think that having to stand up all day without... You can go into the military in some branches at 39 years old, by the way. Being able to sit down. So like, I don't know about how all the different places work, but I know that whenever I worked at Sam's Club and then I talked to other people that worked at jobs that were similar to that, you were literally not allowed to sit down. Oh yeah, you worked at Sam's Club for about that. Yeah, you can't sit down. <laughs> In America, you can't. That's crazy. And that's really rough. I mean, that's extremely physically taxing. Like, I don't even see how this is an argument. It's crazy how people don't have that. Kitchen work is mentally stressful. Yeah, I, I would say it is. Sure. You're off the rails of Advent Preacher's point. Um, No, my point is that I think that kitchen work is very hard. It is some of the hardest work that people have to do outside of very extreme examples. Yeah. Like, for example, like I would say kitchen work is generally more physically demanding than basically any office job. It's really, really fucking hard. It is extremely fast paced. It is high demand. You, in a lot of places, have almost no autonomy. And it's fucking hot. So, yeah. And, and also you get paid for shit. And people talk down to you constantly. I see it in and out workers all over the place. The confusion is here. People are having trouble understanding how Ab is making a narrative, uh, normative argument, which is what you're responding to. Yes, I, I think that. Oh shit, you got timed out. Sorry about that. Um, you typed something and it was pretty big. I'm a, a mechanic in my field, in the area, and we aren't paid very well. We are treated very well by people because people tend to have their own opinion on what we should do, what rather than we actually do. I get it though. It's different in different areas. I'm speaking from my own experience and comparing towards experience that you've shared in your own life. Yeah, no, I, I get that, and I think that that's good. And also, I, I would also like I'm going to be honest with you, right? Of course, people aren't going to tell that to you directly, right? So people are clearly not going to say directly to you. Let me untime you out too. Sorry. Um, people are not going to say and disrespect you personally, right? Uh, but they do still hold that opinion. I oh, okay. Well, they just hold that opinion because Asmongold says so. Okay. Well, that answers that question. I think that's that's true. And also, like, you're talking about, like, your personal experience. And, of course, like, everybody's personal experience informs how they view society. But I personally think that society actually doesn't care about how hard somebody's job is. <laughs> your All of your personal experiences are forming your perspective on society. But my personal... Uh, belief is that no one cares. It's like, okay, well, luckily, Asmongold's personal belief trumps everybody else's. So it all works out in the end. But maybe Abba's point would be a little bit stronger if you added in a third component, which is education. I think that uneducated people that have to work really hard aren't respected, but educated people that do have to work really hard are respected. I think that's a little bit clearer. But in terms of uneducated work, I, I really don't think that society has that perspective. That isn't his point. I think that it is. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but I really think that that's the point that he's making. I, I think that like, so let's listen to it real quick. And I, I, I will, we'll go through it, okay? Missing his point? Yeah, let's listen to it again. We we'll internalize this okay, and whether or not you want to hear about your suffering. Okay, oh, oh, wait. Well compensated okay. for the level of difficulty of your job. And this is how most people internalize this. And whether so you're talking about most people? Talking about society, most people? How they want to hear about your suffering. How difficult is your job? How well do you get compensated for it? Yeah. If your job is extremely difficult and hard to manage, but you get paid peanuts, complain as you want. I will never get mad at a garbage man for whining about their job. Wonder why? Because they get peanuts to go pick up your fucking trash. I, I agree. I agree. I totally agree with him. I, I wouldn't get mad about a garbage man complaining about his job, but I also wouldn't get mad about a doctor or a streamer compl complaining about their job. I don't think that it's accurate. Hold on. Hold on. He just said he doesn't give a shit and doesn't want to hear anybody complain about their job 10 minutes ago. Now he's saying he wouldn't care if anybody complained about their job. What the fuck's happening, bro? You can't just fucking 180 on me. I'm trying to follow this. It's so hard. He just said he doesn't want to hear anybody complain about their job, and that is his strict belief as a streamer and why he doesn't complain on stream because he doesn't want to hear anyone complaining, including a cashier, because he's paying them. Now he's saying... That he thinks everyone should be able to come. All right, let's just continue. I, I, well, fuck it. That society actually cares about the plight of these people that have uh, very low paying jobs. And I don't think that in terms of what he said, most people, I don't think that's accurate. Snuck streamer into examples. Well, yeah, of course, because that's what we're talking about. Wouldn't it be? Most people complain about their job and then don't do anything about it. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, we'll get mad when a streamer says his job is more draining than mine. Oh, sure. 
he's talking about in terms of job difficulty. Yeah, but I don't think that people, I, I don't, I don't agree with his assumption that most people care about whether your job is hard or not based off of how well you're getting paid and how hard your job is. I actually don't think that people care about that. And I don't think that they respect it either. And I think the proof of that is how society treats a lot of, uh, you know, again, like growing up and going to high school and how going to college was viewed as being successful and not going to college was viewed as not being successful. That, that's, that's really what it is. Pull it. That's not his point. That is absolutely his point. He didn't say people would care. He said they tolerate the complaining. That means that they care. Anybody who's complaining about their job. So here's a really good example of this. Um, Love you, Sonia. Good night. So the only person I don't want to hear complain about their job is millionaire actors and streamers, to be fair. Recently, there's been... No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll explain myself. That is caring? Yes, it is. Chat's being dishonest now? Yes, chat is being dishonest. I know that there's a lot of people who are agreeing... Or sorry, uh, getting mad. There are a lot of people who are unhappy because I'm not bowing down to an emotional argument. Why would I... Charm Sovereign says, I think it's okay for people to complain. I just wouldn't care. I guess it depends on what you consider caring, right? Like, I would feel like a tinge bad in the moment. But, oh, that sucks, man. You know, but I pr probably wouldn't do anything to change your situation. So, like, what is actually caring? Is caring mean you try to help this person? Or is caring mean you feel kind of bad for him in the moment? I'd feel bad for somebody that's sitting behind the register and they all look disheveled and they're fucking tired. And they're like, man, this, I, I've been working for 14 hours. I'd be like, fuck, that sucks, bro. That sucks. And I'd mean it. That sucks. You know? Um, but I wouldn't like be like, here's ten thousand dollars so you can leave, you know? That so I admit to being wrong for something that I'm not wrong about. And again, if somebody has evidence of me being wrong, please provide the evidence. Okay, here we go. An example for why people care about the money aspect is because you can work a shit job and then tell your parents to pay, and then suddenly it's okay. It happened with me in the IT field and my parents wanted a doctor only, but after I showed the pay, suddenly I'm respected. I'm trying to like give me a minute to like think about because no, he's right. He's right about what he's saying. He's definitely right about what I uh I think it's a very, very bad idea for him to say, uh, if I'm wrong, people should say uh people should like bring evidence forth. And I'm like, bro, you fucking that you invited a lot of people to fuck with you you just you fucking wrong. <laughs> you wrong so 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 much. What he's saying. I'm trying to think about like if that contradicts what I was saying. It does, but how though? But yeah, can you explain to me how that contradicts it? Because maybe I'm not entirely understanding what the difference is. You say that people are annoyed because of the complaining and not the money. I'm saying that the money matters in regards to people's feelings towards the job. I don't know if it fully disproves you or anything, but I think the money matters basically. But I think that that's really the point that I'm making. And I, I actually think that you're agreeing with me. Because so what you're saying is that your job is very well respected because you're making a lot of money. So that means that if you work in, for example, fast food, your job isn't very well respected because you don't make a lot of money. So the respect actually isn't derived from how hard you're working. It's in fact derived from the money that you're making. No, uh, as one gold said five minutes ago, it's derived from your education level, not the money you're making. Which is what I said. And I think that's what I was no. arguing against. With no, he said it was education. Uh, people um, respect it if you're educated versus not educated. He did not say money. Um, so it's another thing wrong. What he said. I don't, know if full I don't disagree with that point entirely. But... He definitely did not say money. He said education. It just proves or anything, but I think money matters. Yeah, yeah, 100% it does, 100%. People respect jobs that make a lot of money. People don't respect jobs that don't make a lot of money. It's that simple. And I think people always tell you that they respect any job that they that you do, and they'll be nice to you, but then they'll laugh behind your back if you work in a job that's not socially accepted. I think that's really the truth. It's just, that's the reality. That's what I think. Teachers, I think a lot of people massively disrespect teachers. If I was president, I would double the teacher's salary for every single teacher in the U.S. instantly. I think that's... Yeah, that's not, uh, that's not what presidents should do. You don't just uh, arbitrarily double a salary for everybody. <laughs> it's just going to cause inflation. As my, ah, fuck it. He thinks lawyers just give you free shit. It's fun. Why is the video going so fast? I'm playing on fast speed because it's very long. That's the reason why we have bad teachers in a lot of cases. It's because why would somebody want to be a teacher whenever they could work in the private sector and make twice as much money? And I think teachers are disrespected because they don't make a lot of money. Absolutely. You see it all the time. Like, for example, anytime that there's a conversation of like a teacher um, doing anything or complaining about anything, uh, I think you can see people all the time in the comments talking shit about it. Yeah, for sure. I don't um, I don't disrespect teachers. I've never seen anybody that dislike teachers or disrespect them. I think they respect teachers a lot, actually. I don't respect teachers that are like wanting to teach thir third graders uh, that they should look into being a boy or vice versa, a girl, because they're trans and the teacher wants to invoke that on people. That's the only time I, disrespect, I don't care about teachers. But I think teachers, I don't think teachers are bad, disrespected unless they're shitty, you know, overtly shitty teachers. Sure. Especially by students. Yeah, students disrespect them too. I guess your point. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and that's yeah. what I'm saying, right? It's like, I, I really don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm off base with this at all. And again, like if somebody, again, like I, I hope that you guys understand that I have no problem listening to other people's perspectives. 
I, I will I will listen to other people's perspectives and I will hear what they have to say and I will try to interpret it in a good faith way. Let's keep going. Go ahead. Your guys' difficulty level may be at a four or five, but you get compensated so goddamn well. Nobody trying to hear that shit. Whenever people come to me like, man, isn't YouTube shit hard? I'm like, yeah, I guess, it, it, but, it, 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 but I get paid so well. I'm going to shut the fuck up about it. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely, like, there's, like, extreme examples, things like getting, uh, getting, like, stalked and, like, having people, like, attack you in real life. Like, there are, like, definitely, like, super, super extreme examples about it. But overall, yeah, I totally agree with them. Absolutely. Because I'm not going to go back to my old job. I wonder why. Because I used to get paid shit to so, do extremely hard work. No, but he just, he just said that streamers should be allowed to complain. Now he's saying that he thinks they should shut the fuck up. But then before Tim, the, before that, he also said that no one should be allowed to complain. Because no one cares. And he doesn't want to hear the cashier complaining because he paid them money. <sighs> yeah, that's most people's reality. Yes. Most people are not being compensated half as well as the difficulty of their job. So they don't Absolutely. want to hear you bitch and moan about the fact that it's so socially draining. Like they don't got to deal with the same shit for one hundredth of your paycheck. You're He's completely right about this. But I don't think that him being right about this justifies the behavior. I would say like, I don't know, ethically. And, and this is this is kind of like maybe a high ground take of mine. But I think that in general, you should try to listen and understand how people feel, even if you feel like you're in a better position than them. Because I think that the uh, I, I think that it's very easy to effectively like dehumanize people and invalidate how they feel. Last video, Asmongold implied that 400 viewers meant you were a bad streamer. Now he is saying that he tries to look at everybody in their different amounts of success. And look at them all evenly with respect. Are you fucking kidding me? He just said that goblin dude the other day was a bad streamer because he only had 400 viewers. And his opinion didn't matter because 400 viewers. And now he's saying that he looks at every single person in their different brackets of success and tries to treat them all equally. Okay feel and what they think whenever you place them in a position mentally that is above you. And that's what I was talking about before, how upwards discrimination is very popular in America. And I was talking about how that's corrosive and bad. And so, yeah, I actually, I, I understand that this is the case. And that's why I never like, when was the last time I complained about screaming? Like, for example, I used to tweet all the time. Oh, my stream's been so hard. I have to take a break again. I never do that. I don't do that. I have not done that in literally fucking years. But I don't think this is an ethically good thing, even though he is stating a reality. And it is a reality that I do reinforce asking for sympathy whilst also belittling their experience talk about how much harder you have it bro you're yeah. not gonna get nobody's sympathy and if you don't sure. understand that that's because you're fucking out of touch nobody's trying to hear that shit yeah and i know asman gold knows this because a while back he was telling game developers i don't give a how hard your shit is nobody's totally trying fucking true absolutely 100 fucking percent true and i said that with streaming absolutely nobody gives a fuck how you feel and and it's the same thing like so you can make and, and this this might seem like a bit of whiplash because i'm talking about like two separate things right so like i can talk about like the ethical world that I think is best and that I try to live by in the cases that I can, which is trying to listen and understand how other people feel and trying to. OK, yeah. So he just said, I think he just realized that he's been fucking saying the opposite shit over and over. So he's like, oh, I'm actually talking about two whole, two whole different things entirely <laughs> to, to qualm that. So, uh, yeah, thank God for that. Like the stream, by the way, you bitches. We're almost to 600. Get on it, dog. On it. Like basically compromise with people by understanding them and taking them at face value and trying to empathize with what people's perspective is. I think this is a good thing. However, back over here in reality, outside of my own ethical uh, utopia, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. This is the hypocrisy, though. Well, of course. So is he saying that he gives a fuck and nobody else does? And he's saying he's morally superior? Or is he saying he thinks everybody should give a fuck, but no one gives a fuck? Also, he doesn't give a fuck. I don't really know what he's saying right here. You're missing the entire part of the video? No, I'm not. I, I, I think I understand it entirely. Uh, what am I not What am I not missing? You're greedy on how something can be socially draining, and rather than complain about Hassan, they are mostly mad about you? Well, that's how, people can be mad about me as, as much as they want. That's fine. It, it's just the internet. Who cares? I, I mean, really, guys, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I think uh, Asmongold understands he said a lot of shit, and now he's like back into a corner, so he's like doing the whole, oh, it's just the internet. Who gets? No one cares. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's, this is all stupid anyway. <laughs> oh my god there are some tweets that yeah let me turn the chair you care i do care i wish that everybody agreed with me and it's disappointing to me that i feel like i'm going up against people it's like you can tell them that you're looking at the color red and they'll tell you that it's green 
it's very frustrating for me to do that. And I do think that, you know, the, uh, you know, if you gaze into the abyss long enough, the abyss will gaze back into you. I think that we're beginning to descend into the abyss. However, I do, I do like having conversations like this. I do, I, I do unironically enjoy it. I, maybe, maybe that's a fucking mental disorder, but I genuinely don't find this like mentally or like emotionally taxing. I think it's totally fine. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. And here, make the fucking games. Mm -hmm. Xavier's tweet was well-intentioned and he went on to, but he said streaming, uh, streaming, and he knows it very well. He says streaming, you have people attacking you all day. It's very, very taxing. But now he's saying it's not taxing to have controversial talks. Add a lot of them. He, he made a lot of very good points. But I think it misses well, the perspective of the consumer. Of I literally said that. And this is the thing, is developers need to stop. Like nobody gives a f about, oh, oh, it's so hard. Get the, shut the f up, pussy. Stop yep. crying. Yep. Either do it or you know, holy f just that nobody cares about, oh, it's so hard. Oh, well, this is, bro, True. you're talking to people that work in construction, yep. and you're going to say that it's hard? Your job could be more demanding Absolutely. than that. I don't know. But guess what? To them, it's not. But now when yep. it's you guys, like, oh, we want, and you expect sympathy for what reason? No, I, I don't expect it at all, and I know that I won't get it. No, he's totally right. This is a complete contradiction of what I'm saying, and that's what I was talking about before, with, like, how I think things should be versus how I think things are. Oh! So he's saying what he said before is how things are, and what he said when he was defending Hassan is how things should be. So either, either he's he's saying both are true. <laughs> so we've come back again, everyone, to everything is true all at once. He can't be wrong. He can't be wrong because he's. Uh, it's just, it's a clever it's kind of a clever way of arguing your point because he's now saying both points are true. And he yeah, yeah, yeah. And like in my opinion, I find it to be problematic that people think that way, but I also know that that's true. Does that make sense? I I'll respond to some comments here. Love your ability to do a complete 180 when faced with major backlash. Yep. When at level content creators contradict your opinions. Way to walk back on your points. Never punch up, but it's easy to punch down. Yep. What did I say that was inaccurate? <laughs> okay. What did I say that was uh, inaccurate? He fucking says that shit a lot. You literally just said you contradict yourself, so accept that and stop digging. No, I. so basically what I'm saying is that I think that people are being unreasonable for saying that a person can't complain about the way that they feel, but I also don't think that you should accept sympathy for, uh, or sorry, you should, let me think of a way to put this. <laughs> This is literally the Jordan Peterson moment. Oh, gotcha, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you have got me. You have got me here. But uh, let me let me just think. Got ya. Got him. <laughs> oh, damn. Let me think about how to put this. Oops. Shit. I'm saying that people should be able to complain, but they shouldn't also be able to complain. Shit. Fuck. What do I do? In my opinion, what I would do if I was... As Mongold right here is I'd be like, ah, oh, bro, you guys are completely right. I'm a dumbass. I've contradicted myself so hard. And I think I was just getting caught up in defending a Twitch streamer because I have that I have the same perspective. And I think I was leaning way too hard into my perspective. But I think you guys have completely changed that respect perspective. That's what I would say. But I don't think he's gonna say that. I think you can obviously express the way that you feel and you can't tell somebody the way that they feel doesn't exist. Yeah, this is a good way to say it. So it's that it's not that a person can't feel a certain way because I think that what people are saying is that you can't feel a certain way, which I think is not true. I think that you can obviously feel a certain way. But no, no one is saying that. No one's saying that. They're saying Hassan Parker said that socially streaming is a harder job than any other job on earth. That is the original point. It has not evolved any way, shape, or form to people saying you're not allowed to complain about anything ever. No one ever said this. But you can't expect other people to care about it. And I think that also that's kind of a bad thing in a lot of cases. But it is still true. Does that make sense? Seems no. hypocritic because you actively feel a way that you say is unethical to feel? Well, of course it's hypocritical because everything that I... So this is the reality. Is that there are a lot of things that I take advantage of in life that are hypocritical. Like, for example, I think slavery is bad, and I have no problem consuming content that is made through slavery. Because I don't really care about it that much. And I think that we all do that. Like, Power World stuff. Why are you, why are you, do, don't, why are you saying this, bro? Why would you say anything like this? Say that you have an iPhone, and fucking children are mining the fucking shit. What are you doing? 
just there's so many good examples you could give and you went straight to slavery. <laughs> <laughs> He's never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> Stuff like that. And it's like, for example, I think stealing is bad, but I would have no problem pirating music. I think speeding is bad, but I speed regularly. Not too fast, though, by the way. Speeding. Slavery, speeding, uh, same thing. <laughs> yeah, slavery was abolished, you know, in the 1800s. You know, that's crazy when that happened. Uh, also, I speed, you know, shouldn't speed. Shouldn't own a slave either. Same thing. <laughs> um. So, yeah. And, and so I think that really I get what you're saying, but you have to look at it from my perspective as well. And I think that we all do this. People just affirmed Asmon's point. The only way here. I don't even know what Asmon Gold's perspective is now. He says you got to look at it from my perspective. What the fuck is your perspective? What is Asmon Gold's perspective? Can someone tell me? <laughs> I'm so confused. What they want to hear and they're stupid. They refuse to try to understand someone's point. Yes. Nobody thinks streaming is the easiest thing to do, but you literally play video games for a living and you make so much money. There's no point coming on here and talking about the hardships of streaming when everyone would switch roles with you. I understand that. And that was what I basically said about game developers. Uh, that's definitely true. You're totally right. But that doesn't mean that those that, that the way that they feel is invalid. You see what yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. That was never the point. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course, anybody in the chat right now, with the exception of Pescator and maybe Carrie, would love to come fucking be on my stream and make fucking money and shit. 99.8% of people would love to do that. That was never the point. This was never the point. Ever, even in the realm of the point. What I'm saying, and I think that it's not unreasonable to expect somebody to be drained. Like, for example, I, I think that like those game developers, they are massively drained, they are massively stressed out. It does really suck for them. And I totally acknowledge that all of those bad things that happen to those game developers are all real. But here's the difference: I don't give a fuck because I want to play a good game. In the same way that you don't give a fuck because you want to play a good game. No, he said that. He said that in his personal belief, he thinks everyone should be treated well and respected. But now he's saying he just wants a good game and he doesn't give a fuck. Okay. So, okay. All right, well. Is he talking about a hypothetical, his hypothetical evil self now, or is he talking about another... I, okay. And because you want to watch a good stream. That's the difference. Does that make sense? No. That's not the argument. The argument was streaming drains you more than any normal job. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really think that his... Mr. Project Trex is on point here. ...on minute that way, and uh, if he did, he is wrong. Uh, he, now he says, again, Hassan didn't mean it that way. That's why we're talking about this new video, apparently. I, so, so is that... Can we kind of speed run the rest of this? Um, let me make sure you're misconstruing. Okay, all right. Let me let me read this person because obviously I, I didn't read their message earlier. Um, you're misconstruing my point. I never said that you said something inaccurate. You contradicted what you said yesterday to defend Sink's nephew. Ironically, past you made in the past, not just on game desert artists with AI either. Yes, people don't care about how you feel. That is definitely true. It is a sad reality. It sucks. But also, you have to keep in mind that whenever I was talking about game developers, also, I was talking about it in the in, in the primary context of what happens whenever a game is bad. So whenever a person expresses themselves, so like here, here's a good example. I, I didn't really think about it like this, but this is actually a good way to explain it. So basically, whenever a game developer says that their job is really hard, I am very sympathetic, and I think that's horrible. But whenever a game developer says their job is really hard and the game is bad, then I'm not sympathetic. I think that's a better consolidation of the way that, that like, the way these two points come together. Does, does that make better sense? Because like, I, I definitely understand the way that like a game developer would feel in this situation, and I can I can totally see like what their perspective is with like thinking that this is contradictory. But I think really the customer really cares about the experience that they're getting. And if they're getting a bad experience, then they don't really care about the work conditions of the person. It's like, for example, if uh, the iPhones suddenly got more expensive because we started using ethically, so ethically sourced cobalt, well, people would be furious about that because now they're way more expensive. Well, we don't want to have to do that. Let's go back. Can we just have the kids do it again? Like, this was great. Like, we, were, we had $1,000 phones. This was amazing. And so it's not that people don't care about it. It's more that people don't care about it whenever it comes at the expense. Or sorry, I don't care about it. It's more. It's not that I don't care about it. It's that I don't care about it whenever it comes at the expense of what I am paying for. Does that does that make sense? I I think this is a much better way for me to explain it. Like talking through it, I think this is a much better way to explain it. Yeah, everyone knows that you're wrong. That's why you're getting pushback. No, <laughs> no, no. Let's let's look at the dislike ratio. Twenty-seven thousand dislikes, fourteen thousand likes. You got about a sixty-eight percent dislike ratio. Uh, there's actually a lot of people are, that are agreeing with me. 
I think that tons of people do. Phone analogy is a huge I'll take. There's not a single solution for that for a problem. Yeah, but nobody cares what the solution is. They just want a cheap phone. That's that's the difference. So so do you see kind of what the uh, make a poll? What, what do you want me to do a poll of? Uh, what's this here? I'm not referring to the people who don't know how game devs are. Uh, for the record, I agree with you on those takes. I'm more referring to the fact that you can't have it both ways. For example, in the past, you've insinuated fast food workers are not a real job. No, I didn't say it's not a real job. I said it's a job that a robot can do, and I hope it does because the jobs are terrible. When did I ever say it's not a real job? I never said that. Now, reality is jobs socially draining. I've touched, uh, touched on that somewhat today. The irony is you defended this on yesterday because you made a similar comment. Now you're walking back because of the backlash. What, if, what do you think that I'm walking back? Yeah, what, what do you think that I'm walking back? Because I've spent two hours on this now, right? I mean, if I was walking back, I feel like it would have taken a lot less time. It's taking more time because he's getting, people are bringing up what he said. And he's like, oh shit. Yeah, I guess it is hypocritical, but I didn't actually mean it that way. I mean it from a dip, from a society perspective. So every time something is thrown at him, he says, oh, that's my, pers my, that's my personal perspective. I'm talking about society's perspective, which is the complete opposite. Therefore, both of my perspectives, society and self, are both accurate depending on who and what you're talking about. That's what he's saying. So he's saying he can't be wrong no matter what. Uh, I mean, I think he did, but you probably don't. No, no, yeah, of course. That's what I was saying. Okay, so this guy, yeah, we can move past this. You're not connecting the dots and missing the entire point? Okay, uh, connect them for me. Okay. I already have a clip insinuating it. I can link it if you want. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that That's great. Um, oh, God. Yeah, can you put a couple of spaces in it? So it doesn't get deleted because it'll, it'll just get deleted. Uh, you are walking back saying that if Hassan is saying streaming is harder than real nine to five job, he's wrong. You're adamant and wrong. Everyone's yesterday. He found, okay, you found a clip. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and just open it up right here. It really is. Okay. And uh, some of these people getting a reality check is great. The sad thing is some of the uh, restaurants, they automatically charge the server 10% of the bill uh, mm -hmm. to tip out to the hostess and busboys. Well, I, I think that like really what I've always found to be ironic about this is that what do I usually tip for? I tip for good food. And the waiter doesn't even make the food. You think I'm going to tip them for bringing a plate to me? Are you kidding me? Get the fuck out of here. Like, if I had a menu and I could just put the thing in myself, I'd do that. So what is the argument with this? He's insinuating that I, uh, he's saying that you're insinuating waiters and waitresses aren't real jobs. Well, it's not that they aren't real jobs. It's that I'm not going to take it as seriously and I don't want to tip the person who's a waiter. I want to tip the person to make my food, which is true. I think being a waiter is a vastly, like a vastly less skilled and less important job than being a cook. Absolutely. And I want to also make very clear that I did not say restaurant workers. I said people that work in a kitchen. Waiters don't work in a kitchen. That's why they're waiters and not cooks. So can you, so is that, does, does that make sense? The argument is that it's a bit jarring to downplay one job for its perceived lack of difficulty while enjoying the social drainage while defending your friends. Okay, so yeah, I can see what you're saying. Uh, so I'm not shocked at all. I'm not shocked at all that Asmongold doesn't tip. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, Every single every single personality trait that Asmongold ex exhibits in this video, one hundred percent would lead me to believe he doesn't tip anyone ever for any reason. <laughs> he's one of those people, you know. He's one of those people. I would absolutely never tip. It's not my job to uh, give uh, give people a, a wage. It's the company's job to give them a wage. Okay, I'm not tipping anyone. I'm a millionaire. I don't tip, okay? I, I totally, I totally got that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I don't I don't agree. Um, I have had friends that have worked in the serving industry my entire life, and I tip extremely well unless it's bad service. Oh, it's a bit jarring to downplay one job for its perceived lack of difficulty. Um, I, I don't necessarily downplay the job, but I don't necessarily think that as a tip. So I think that if you want to make a one-to-one -one comparison, would I what would I say if somebody as a streamer was expecting to be tipped? I would say, get the fuck out of here. Too bad. I have no problem with somebody being a waiter. I would say the same thing. I was saying this in the context of expecting getting a tip. Now, I appreciate you actually having a link here and, and having a conversation about this. But do you understand the difference? Like the difference between me taking a job seriously and then me thinking that a person is entitled to getting extra money for it's entitled to a tip. Like these are two very different things. Are, are, they, are they to you guys? Because to me, I think that they are. For the record, again, I agree with the fact that tipping culture is bullshit. This is working in the fast food industry whenever I was an undergrad. I don't think it's fair to say what you said because it insinuates all or most waiters are entitled to tips when a streamer your size makes a comment of the clip. Okay, but like, I just want to make sure that like I'm very clear about this. Anytime that a streamer acts like they are entitled to being paid for streaming, I will shit on them. And if, clip it, clip it. You can save that for five months from now whenever Hassan says this and then I defend them, okay? How about that? So clip it right there. So anytime that anybody thinks that they are deserved uh, to be paid for something like this, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and remind me.
and I will shit on them too. But waiters don't act like it though. Waiters absolutely think that they are entitled to tips. That's absolutely 100% true. Oh, in, in, in a, like if you're in Europe, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably different. With fake sob stories too? Yeah, 100%. Like all this like emotional appeal, like, oh, well, if you don't, you know, like all these other like arguments like that, guys, yeah, 100%. So do, do you see kind of like where we're on? Uh, like he definitely doesn't respect those people, even though he says he thinks that everyone should be respected and uh, fuck it. He said the opposite five times now. It doesn't matter. Like where I'm coming from with this, because I think that it's like obviously a very different argument. Like I, there are a lot of jobs that I really don't take very seriously. And I don't think that they're very hard jobs to do. However, um, all those people are entitled to be paid the wage that they said, but I don't think that all of them are necessarily entitled to like my money directly through tips. And so I was more or less referring to the expectation or the entitlement of tips. And I, I think I don't think he's aware that uh, servers in America make two dollars and sixty cents an hour. H Hypnotic, what's up, dude? Hell yeah, shit on him. Good. This is consistent between uh, a restaurant versus a stream or anything like that. Oh, sorry, you get time. Sometimes if people type really long messages, they get timed out. Uh, it makes all the impressional teams watching your stream literally avoid tipping. I think that they should. I think that the only time that tipping is going to go away is whenever people stop subsidizing it, and then the companies have to actually change. I, I, I hate to say it, but I actually think this is true, and I, I completely support not tipping. I tip all the time because it's like, especially if people recognize me, they're like, oh, it's the streamer guy. Okay, well, I mean, he's got it. I mean, oh, he didn't tip. I fucking, I, I knew he wouldn't. What a bald piece of shit. And so it's like, it's like they know me, and so they know that I have a lot of money. And so they're like, okay, I've, I've got to give this guy like the 20% or the, the, the 30%, right? But like, otherwise, no, I, I used to never tip myself, and I actually don't think tipping will go away until people actually stop doing it when we service over a decade i don't think it's truly in the he's definitely never worked in the service industry he's definitely never worked in the service industry he says if people recognize him he'll tip that's narcissistic of course it is um so he thinks everyone should stop tipping um uh, hundreds of thousands of people would lose their homes but as long as he didn't have to ever tip again as a result he did say that he cares about the end result and not how we get there right he did say he he's okay with child slavery as long as he pays $1,000 for an iPhone. He did say that. So, Has he ever worked a job outside of his room? He's worked He worked at a summer for I, the IRS, and then he worked for a short period at Sam's Club, but he said he's never worked for a continuous period um, combined longer than two years in his life. Then, hey, is somebody off tangent now? But exactly, Pescator. Well, if, if it could damage my rep, I have to tip him. I mean, I'm famous, dude. He's, he let his narcissism show so hard in this fucking response video. I don't know why he published this. My original argument, you were definitely more rooted in your defense of Hassan than today. I just wish you were less on the fence and didn't walk back on things similar to how you handled Andrew Tate. Sometimes it's better to die on a hill. Um, well, I don't think that I'm necessarily walking back anything. And again, like, what do you think that I am walking back? Tipping is important. It's because it's the only, waiter, only the way the waiters support themselves. Fuck them. Fuck them. It's the same way I think about streamers. You think streaming like like if, if you're watching a stream, you don't feel like if you don't feel like subbing or, or anything like that, then don't don't do it. Uh, it you you have no responsibility to do that kind of stuff. You shouldn't give a fuck about it. it what? I'm now he's saying fuck him. I'm so confused. Somebody in the chat so literally like like serving ser this serving laws in America. That's the only way they support themselves. And he's just like fuck him. Fuck them. I understand why this uh, dude. I want. I understand why he has so many dislikes. Jesus Christ. Fuck them. Um. Fuck them. Fuck them. That's pretty much this whole video. And I can't be wrong because I say all things are true. And also fuck them. Toe Goblin says I feel the same way. I. I don't. Um. I don't think people should. I. Uh, it's hard to say how it can be fixed. If you require companies to pay like a wage, they're not going to pay what some tip people make on tips. My ex-wife made $2,000 on Saturdays. $1,500, $2,000 when she was a bartender at a sports bar. It's a very busy sports bar. Um, she'd make $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 every single Saturday. If you took tips away and you just paid her thirty-two dollars a year, she's getting a $60,000 pay cut. So it's kind of hard. Like, what is the fucking fix? What's the fix? It's hard. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just hard. It's hard to, it's a very hard problem because you're going to punish somebody if you try to fix it. Somebody's fucked. You're somebody that's a really good server that makes a lot of money because they're great at what they do. They're going to get punished as a result. So, what is the fix? Every single person I've ever known in my life that was a server 
hate this take. They want their tips because they make a lot in tips. And also, their cash tips, they don't always claim almost any of them. And I totally for that. <laughs> Look at all these super chats. God damn, I totally forgot about super chats, boys. I apologize. I'm a bad friend. Jay Press says, Gar growing up, my mom baked cookies for garbage men that collected our trash. We happily ran down the driveway to give it to him. See? Awesome, Jay Prez. Thank you. Katie the Swiss says, I spent 10 hours a day in concrete box, polished and stainless steel water uh, cooler headers and other parts at 45 years old, 5'11", 150 pounds. I work harder than ass mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Katie the Swiss. I agree with that. Thank you so much, my man. Um, Ahef says, as someone who works 12 to 14 hours a day doing DoorDash and building a business, call me trust one babies like a song made me unreasonably feel with rage. I agree with that 100%. Um, I said the other day, I, there's not many people I'd like to slap around. He's one of them in Minecraft. Thank you, Ahef. Hallucinosis says, Avalon Gold is a dirty communist who gets carried in a while. <laughs> he is definitely dirty. Thank you, Hallucinosis. Uh, Mintrax says, the Asmon defense. What I said was wrong. And you're right, but you're also wrong. Yes, that's very accurate. Thank you, Mintrax, so much. I love you. Now, Charon says, Cam, am I behind on the stream? If you already answered, what's the, what Vegas meetup are you not going to? Oh, I'm going. No, I'm, I'm going to Vegas. I just can't go to the F&T event. Um, thank you, Malturn. Uh, Frozen Toy says, uh, has he ever had a job in the service industry? No. He's so much of a tool bag. He doesn't understand. Yep. He worked at Sam's Club. I don't, I had, doubt it had anything to do with like servicing people. Yeah, he maybe talked to customers sometimes. I don't know. Thank you so much, Frozen Toy. We are so close to double five milk that it's scary. I don't know how close, but we're we're at the we're at the last decimal. <laughs> oh man! All right, let's get let's finish it. We only got like a a, a couple minutes left. Doesn't matter. Do whatever you want to do. Spend your money however you want to spend it. Don't ever make somebody. Don't let anybody else ever try to like uh you know emotionally blackmail you into thinking that you have to give your money away because somebody else went into a legal contract that they as an adult decided to sign and then now they're unhappy with the outcome of it. Uh, no, you never have to do that. It's a bad idea. The whole concept that basically the upper class has pitted the working class against the middle class for waiters and people that are trying to socially uh what's the word uh, socially like like condemn or uh, demonize or you know make somebody feel bad for not tipping uh no 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 if you don't want to tip don't fucking tip and if enough people do that it'll go away as a waiter and server i think what you're saying is unfair i never expect a tip i work fine dining and i work really hard to create an experience for my guests you also seem to have a complete understanding where the tips go and how they're divided it's not how fair how you downplay the physicality of my job i don't care whenever i go to a restaurant i want to pay for i want to i want to pay the price on the menu that's just the way it is i get that it sucks i totally understand it reason I totally understand it sucks, but fuck you. What? What? He says that you legally went into a contract with an employer. That contract for servers includes only getting paid two sixty dollars an hour because you rely on tips. He has no idea what he's talking about. He's just fucking saying shit with zero. He has zero knowledge of what he's talking about. Kind of like how he said any lawyer would just take your case individually, not a domestic abuse case against children or women, and they would just pay for it out of their own pocket because millions of dollars will just come to you. He says so many things with such confidence without having any knowledge about the things he's talking about. It's fucking cringe, bro. This is really cringe. He doesn't even realize like the, what the service industry is. He just thinks that, I guess he thinks they get paid minimum wage or maybe more. I don't fucking know what he thinks. Look, if you don't like tipping, that's one thing. I get it. But you also have to understand why tipping is necessary in the current environment. Right? Now, look, if you're a bad server, you're a bad server. But if you're a good server and you work really hard to create a good experience and you work really hard to make a lot more because you're such a good server. That's a legitimate thing. Interesting, man. And also, by the way, I want to make sure that I'm being consistent with this. I feel very bad for you, and that really sucks. But I don't care whenever it comes to my money. Like, my sympathy for your problem ends whenever my wallet opens. No, he said he don't care and fuck him. Now he's saying he does care. Dude, was he on fucking drugs? Was he on drugs on the stream? Was he on something? This is why. Like, were you on like a, a fucking stimulant? What what were you what, what happened here? He's like, he's like the damn fucking Old Testament. <laughs> he's like, 
every page like it contradicted like no I, I don't really know i don't i'm not religious so i don't really know the bible at all so i'm just trying to make a stupid joke um but yeah he's very he's contradicting himself really hard here every two seconds it's very strange i care i sympathize with you it sucks i definitely get it but i don't care enough to give them money no he said he doesn't care now he doesn't care enough or he does care or he does sympathize okay i, don't, I can't even fucking this is like listening to legalese Guys, you get paid millions of dollars. Half of the time, you guys sit down on the screen shutting the fuck up while something else plays, okay? You're oh, just think, oh, people wish I did that. Reacting. Or sometimes you play the video and you leave your screen for 30 minutes. You eat on the job. Like, don't pretend like this shit is crazy. You guys, Kenny, I remember I used to be able to eat at the IRS. Can you eat at your desk where you work? I think it, that's probably like a 50-50, right? It's like a 2080. No. Yeah, it seems like about 50-50. It's socially training? Sure, I can see that. Don't act like your job is... I, maybe I'm talking from my perspective. I was never able to eat, like, sitting at a thing, but, yeah. Special in comparison to others. It's not. It's not. Being in the military, socially training. Working oh, yeah. sales, socially training. Very. Even when I didn't have to work, when I was doing remote working, it was just me, myself, with my coworkers, it was socially training to have to fucking sit in Zoom calls and listen to people babble about some dumb shit. Could be. Or sitting there looking at a fucking spreadsheet and then having to type shit out and my brain just wants to melt. You think after that I want to go talk to a bunch of people? Is, is the YouTube game hard? I don't know. What you do for a living? I'm a pastry chef. What time do you get up in the morning? Every morning I wake pastry up at five chef. in the morning. Fuck I gotta that. be the I gotta be the pastry, but that's worse than my boss. My boss has to be three, but be there at three yep. to get the orders in and this and that and that and, that and everything and stuff. And how much is that? Oh, that's twelve hours. My job is good. <laughs> my job is good. The fuck with me? Ah, I get to talk to people and I make so much money, more money than I haven't done in my life. But it's so hard because of the comments and everything and stuff. And I get to take breaks whenever the fuck you see all this on. All the people that are like, yeah, Sonia, you're, you're talking to people that cannot come, that they're not even understanding, and they never had to understand what you're doing, what you're living. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I'm that's also a really good point, too, uh, that he's making is that he's basically saying, like, you're not going to get sympathy from people that don't understand your experience yep. because streaming is like such a unique experience. And this is why I was saying, like, remember, what I've told people like many times, like, I think streamers make a big mistake treating their chat like a diary. That's exactly what I mean. Glad that I, all this happened, yeah. all this in my life happened, the YouTube game and the comedy and this, this and that and whatever happened yep. now. So even though I am here where I'm at right now doing what I do. I can still connect with you because I got the experience of having to do that and having the bullshit job. And I've been doing jobs sometimes and they come to me, some coworkers come to me and be like, yo, you need to slide because you're making us look bad. Listen, listen, listen. Nobody wants to hear about problems. No, listen. nobody gives a fuck. Okay? Nobody gives a fuck. Your problems are your own choice. And literally because you're greedy. Because you're greedy. You know, just turn it off. This is so stressful. Oh, no. God damn, can I try? I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Look, look, look how hard this is. is, it, is it the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, We're about to live a good life. Everyone? Yeah, about to go make love to my wives they're right with a lot of things i definitely can now i i do think that in general whenever i'm talking about understanding what somebody is talking about i do think that you should be able to be empathetic about the way that a person feels oh let me link you guys a video give it a like and, and everything like that I, i'm not subscribed to these guys i thought that i was um where were they wrong um i think that they're wrong that i think that they're wrong that it's a good thing that people don't care i think that people should actually have some degree of empathy for the way other people feel and i think the idea of invalidating other people's problems in life because you view their like their life situation as being advantageous to yours. I think this is a very toxic mindset to have. And kind of like how, how what he the kind of how he thinks for servers. That he just one to one explained exactly what he thinks about servers. One to one, right there. His what he just said the last five seconds was quite literally identical to how he said he feels about servers. That's wild. This they should study this like video, like this should be like in a like a college class, like a like looking at social situations and understanding how the mind works. It's wild, and I think this mindset leads to a lot of resentment. And I think you can see that all the time, and you see that with like girls, for example, that are like constantly resentful towards like men. I think this happens con all the time, and I think in general. You don't have to necessarily think that somebody is right, but I think that it's reasonable for you to understand why a person feels the way that they do and not to invalidate the way that that person feels. But I think that, again, he, like I, this, this is a true thing, but this is like this like really kind of weird middle ground, right? Because like streaming is a job and whenever Hassan is streaming or anybody is streaming, and also like I, I want to make sure one other thing is, is, is clear, is that like Hassan or me, like we are like super, 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 super one percenters, right? And so 
obviously, like we can just afford to turn off the stream and fuck off, like what they said. Absolutely, right? But there are a lot of streamers that are making 100K a year and they don't have a backup plan or they're making 30K a year and they do have to stream every single day. Absolutely. So there are going to be a lot of other people that are on that spectrum that feel the stress a lot more. Most streamers can't do that. And I, I would say whenever I say most streamers, I'm talking about 99% of streamers. So yeah, that, that's really what it comes down to. And uh, you guys have nothing in common with a lot of us. You can't expect us to care. Um, I, I think that in terms of lifestyle, I don't think that my life. He said 99% of streamers make 30 to 100 grand. Uh, the top 0.4% of streamers make over 100 grand. So he's 99% wrong. <laughs> uh, Doug, was it Doug on Twitter posted that stat the other day? I was that much different than most of your lifestyles, to be totally honest with you. Uh, like, uh, like I played, well, I mean, in terms of like outside of what my job is, I, I think that it's basically about the same for a lot of people. Uh, you shower? Yeah, I, well, I, don't, I don't think it's like really that dramatic or that much different. Yeah, if you take out what I do outside of like my streams. Yeah, it used to be until I get a job. Yeah, there you go. You're not talking about the streamers. We're talking about Hassan bitching specifically. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying like in general, I do think that it's, I don't think that it's fair to invalidate the way that Hassan is, uh, like Hassan's personal problems and the way that he feels are not invalidated by the amount of money that he makes. It doesn't mean that after you make a certain amount of money, you will no longer be socially drained or upset. Does that make sense? That's the problem that I have. I, I, I dislike the mindset that if you make a lot of money, you are not entitled to negative emotions. I find this to be incredibly toxic. But I also think that everybody feels that way whenever the product that they are consuming is affected. And that's what I think is so interesting about this topic, too, is because Hassan is the product fundamentally, right? So it's like he is the product, so he's complaining about it, but he's also the product. So like, is this that case? How can Hassan ex express himself without necessarily breaking this rule? It's very confusing, right? Rich Eagles can't complain. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's interesting to talk about it. It is. People are mad because he's downplaying regular jobs. Yeah, I don't think he's necessarily downplaying regular jobs in general. I don't think that's what he meant. But if he was, that, then he's wrong. But I don't think that's what he meant. You're entitled to complaining about your job, the people who make less in a year than you can in a week. Well, of course that you are. Uh, you're, everybody is entitled to their emotions. Uh, and, and I think the idea that they, that they aren't is incredibly unhealthy. Yeah, I, I think everybody is. Now, now the other difference is that you are not entitled to have other people care. I'm not saying that other people should not care. But hopefully, can you guys see kind of where I'm coming from with a lot of this? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I've talked about this for like two, two, two three hours, right? But like, I, I think that my perspective on this is, is pretty fair. I, I think I have, I have a very fair perspective on this. And I understand that it's not something that's like uh, condensable. I probably could condense it into a tweet if I thought about it hard enough. But it, it, it's very complex and there's a lot of like nuances to it as well. And there's like a lot of a social expectation that goes along with it. I think that the real problem and the real subtext of why people are angry is primarily class consciousness. I think people are mad that like, for example, if a viewer, if like a 200 viewer streamer said what Hassan said, I think that people would be a lot more sympathetic towards it. And I think if it was somebody besides Hassan that said it, I think people would be a lot more sympathetic towards it. I think that in general, a lot of people are very negative about it because not only it's Hassan, but also Hassan is speaking from such a position of privilege that I also share. So absolutely not. Um, if a streamer that had two to 500 people watching said that their job as a streamer was harder than every job on earth. No. Social socially. No, they no, people wouldn't be like, Oh, you're right. No. If I said right now to the chat and some of you, I know what you do for a living. If I told you my job like this, like you watching my ass and me watching freaking EFAP and Asmongold, if I told you right now, oh, well, my job is actually way harder than all of you in chat, like socially. Yeah, you could never do this. You would all be like, fuck, you, fuck you. <laughs> you know, what? No, no. Streaming's not socially harder than every job on earth. It's just not, it's, it's objectively wrong. Well, I think that's really what the problem is. And I understand where they're coming from, but I'm going to say I don't really respect that opinion because it's not arrived at logically. It's not about the argument. It's about a person's value judgment of whether another person is allowed to think something, which I think is very stupid. I don't think that's a good way of thinking about things. So yeah, I think that's why a lot of people were mad. I don't think these guys are, are, are in that category, by the way. Um, I'm just saying in general, uh, I think that's really what it is. All right. <laughs> that, that was interesting. It was very, very interesting. Um, I think he's unequivocally wrong. He flip flopped 37 times. And then to, uh, to excuse his flip flopping, he said he was talking about society versus his own perspective to adhere to his flip flopping. He said the guy's uh, house that burnt down wasn't a real problem, but he also said he was extremely sympathetic that um, somebody apparently tried to burn down um, Amaranth's house, which is completely contradicting itself. Um, he also said servers um, should be respected. and um, he tips because he's worried about his reputation if he doesn't tip because he's famous. Um, and then he also said, fuck them. Uh, they don't deserve tips and fuck them. Um, it's their fault. They don't get tips and they shouldn't get tips and we should all stop tipping immediately. Um, but then he says he cares about them again. He also said that people should be cared about and everybody should have, be able to complain about everything. Um, they have the right to complain 
Um, and uh, he feels bad for everybody equally, um, regardless of viewers. But then he told Goblin that he only had 400 viewers and you're not a good streamer if you have 400 viewers is what he implied. Um, but then he says he respects everybody's levels of success equally, but he also says he looks down on certain jobs. But then he also said he doesn't look down on certain jobs because he believes that's wrong and toxic. But then he says that he doesn't, he thinks he, he likes to respect everybody and listen to a conversation. And he also feels empathetic about everybody's situation, but he also says he doesn't care and fuck them. Um, but then he also said that slavery is okay. Um, because if he has to do something to change it, then he won't because he wants to benefit from slavery. Um, and everybody agrees with that, which I can tell you with the downvotes he does. No one does. Um, he also said cashiers shouldn't be able to complain because he's paying them to, to give him a service, even though they're not making the money the company is. Um, and that's the same thing as a multi-million dollar streamer complaining because you're paying them, but they shouldn't be allowed to complain because you're paying them and he doesn't give a fuck. But he also says they should be allowed to complain because they're allowed to complain because everybody should be allowed to complain because it's their own truth, but also fuck them. They shouldn't be allowed to complain. I'm trying. Uh, that's what I, I can't. I, that's what I've got from that. Maybe. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think? Anyways, let's read the last couple super chat. Matthew Fauchin with the pink boy. Matthew Fauchin with a Canadian pink boy. I appreciate you. I love you. You're the man with a plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're at the end of the stream. I got to pee, but we're going to do Naked Snake and Fight Milk, but not only Fight Milk. We're going to do double Fight Milk. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matthew Fauchin. I love you. I appreciate you. You are the goat, the man, the myth, the legend. And also, Chris McGough joining with another pink boy here at the end. This guy was so entertaining, I dozed off. Thank you, Chris McGough. I love you. I appreciate you. My boy with another pink boy getting us to double five milk. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also Junebug starting work. Good night, people. Love you, Junebug. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Although, by the way, he also brought up a ton of statistics that he completely made up and were not real. Oh, the lawyer thing. That was the my the funnest thing was the lawyer thing. Um, anyways, uh, I'm gonna bring up some of these big boys. Look at this veteran biker. I love you. Renee Villarreal, Acid of a Quarty, Whiskey, Sir, Ghost Meteor, the Sag, Master Lions, Matthew Fauchin with a five hundred dollar Canadian boy. Darth Chaz, you guys are crazy. Thank you guys so much. Wow. Um, I'm gonna go pee, and then we're gonna do double fight milk and naked snake, and then we're gonna raid. Uh, maybe Shag if he's still live. He might not be live at the time we finish this. All right, two seconds, boys. I'm angry. I've had enough of these people. Sing along with me while I go pee. Be right back. Do not leave. Don't miss this shit. How's your <laughs> How's your social battery doing? Terrible. I'm flying tomorrow to the Tim Pool compound and hanging out with him all week. So, thank you, Jay Lucky. No, I'm fine. I'm, I'm excited. Let's go. The company store, the paradigm of absolute control. And that's why we're just out here doing simple things, pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural. And this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. And that's why they want to try to keep us out of it. I'm angry. I've had enough of these people. There are bones of Christian murderers gone. There are giant death factories keeping babies alive and selling their body parts. What more do you need to know about these people? I go out and face this scum. They literally crawl out from under rocks. They have green looking skin and they run around screaming, We love Satan, we want to eat babies. I have them on video. Hillary's in the creepy weird six stuff man She sleeps in the same room with that creepy weird old woman Whose mother wears a hood over her head What the hell? That woman number one is ugly Imagine how bad she smells man I'm told her and Obama just stink Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur Little vampire pot and the goblins A 
stumbling round coming after us My spirit gets close to that evil and I feel it go Ah, ah, ah We're such self-centered crap We don't even notice and it's self rising up against us Millions of pointed people of the very worst type And I'm so pissed Gonna stab your daughter at the mall I was watching Fox News as I worked out this morning. Oh, I'm back. I've returned. All right, boys. It's time for some sexy action. Um, real quick, real quick. Don't forget, I'll be on Pop Culture Crisis Friday, and I might be on another show. I don't know. We'll see. Also, um, next Friday, I'll be racing at Phoenix. My first NASCAR Arca Menards deal. Don't miss it. Fox Sports 1, 6 p.m. Friday, Eastern. You can watch me race live. We're going to try to survive the race. That's the point. Um, if anyone has a company they're interested in jumping on at some point in the year for a race, it's super cheap. Um I guess it depends on what you think super cheap, but for a company's marketing budget, super cheap. Um, filling up spots real fast. I got two meetings in the next two weeks for sponsors flying everywhere. Um, one race, it helps me out a lot. We got Cyber Frog for two. It'd be awesome. So, all right, boys, it's time for some Naked Snake. We hit double fight milk. We hit Naked Snake. We hit every damn thing possible. I appreciate you guys so much. I peed so hard. It was the greatest thing. It was so awesome. I peed so much. By the way, please do me a favor. Please, if you have not, please like the stream. I don't think you realize how much that helps me. Getting a thousand likes on a stream um, makes it more recommended. And my streams have been growing a lot lately. Um, so I'm very thankful. But please make sure you hit that like button. If there's nothing else you do or not, please hit that like button. You know. So that's the only thing I, I demand of you, you bastard. All right, so let's do Naked Snake. Let me make sure my boy's uh, live real quick. Where are him's, him's? Hey, Legal Minds is live. Okay, well, can I read him? I didn't see him live on my thing. My boy, can I relate him? I might not be able to rate him anymore. Wait, that makes no sense. We've rated each other a lot. Legal Mind Set. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, I can rate it. Why is that not on there? I want to rate him. He's my boy. Yeah, we're going to rate him. I haven't talked to him in so long. I want to talk to my boy. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's time for Naked Snake. Here we go. You guys ready? Because it's time. Here we go. You guys ready? Give me an up doodle. Get on it, doggone. Monkey man. Monkey man. There you go, Grifter. What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night. I'm searching and I'm melting to you. What a fear in Here we go, boys. Hair. You're so supreme.
Oh my God. In my time, there'd be nobody else crying. It's the way I fly to you. 277 in a row. I'm still in a dream, snake eater. Here we go, boys. Oh my God. I give my life, boys. Not for honor, but for you. In my time, there be nobody else. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Cry. It's the way I fly to you. I'm still in a dream. Snake Eater. Amazing. Amazing. Get the hell on it, doggone it. Oh, my God. Here we go. One final time, everybody in the chat. I love you, and I appreciate you. Get the hell on it. Here we go. Boop, 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 boom. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you guys so much. I love you. I appreciate you. That leaves us with a double fight milk tonight. The first double fight milk in a long time. We're going to go hard today. We're going to have a lot of fun. Get on it, doggone it. Make sure you like the stream, you bitches. Okay? You like it or dislike it. You know, whatever you prefer. But do one of the bitches. All right, come on. Come on. MGS, best game of all time. I got it right here. Well, it's under shit. Metal Gear Solid 3. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, Thank you guys so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you're watching on Fox Sports 1, 6 p.m., March 8th. My first NASCAR race. I'm very excited and pumped. So I hope you guys do tune in to that um, and look for me on the leaderboard at the very bottom. <laughs> it's my first deal. All right? I'm not trying to race. I'm trying to fuck finish. You know, um, that should be everybody's goal at the first. That was my first goal when I first started short track racing. Just survive. And then I started getting top fives a lot. Started getting up there in the field battling for the lead. So after a couple of races, we're going to start going hard. But I want to make sure I get out of there in one piece and learn. Got to practice pit stops. That's my biggest thing. I've never done live pit stops, so I got to fucking get that down. All right, boys. Um, I guess we'll use this water. It'd be rude to win, Retort. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Uh, Culper says it's sad when you didn't get it. Yeah, I was very sad. But we're going to do it this time. Thank you. We're locked in, baby. So we ain't, we're all good. All right, boys. Ooh. Ooh. All right, boys. By the way, if you're new here, I know a lot of people are new and uh, a lot of people don't know like the environment or the atmosphere, or how I am personally. Um, if you try to do provoke tro like pro uh, provoke trolling in the chat, I don't acknowledge it because I don't care. <laughs> so I know a lot of people work real hard to like try to fucking provoke me. I don't, bro, I don't give a fuck about none of that. I grew up fat and got the shit beat out of me and bullied every day when I was in school. You ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get my ass. Sorry. This doesn't I'm over it. I'm an adult. A fat muscular adult. Fat and muscular though. All right, here we go. Four eggs. You guys ready? Let me actually put these out. I always spill them all over my ass. A Z Ninja Tron Gamer with five gifted memberships. Thank you so much, my friend. I love you, and I appreciate you. You're goaded as hell. You're goaded as hell. I appreciate you, my friend. Love you. You're the goat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Egg number one. Look at all those memberships. You goaded as hell. 
good as hell. Um, all right. No! I caught it. I knocked over an egg. I knocked over an egg. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. You ready? One. Uh, that was nice. God, did you see that? It exploded everywhere. Oh, you son of a bitch. I don't even know what to do now. What do I do? Here. Take this. <laughs> Jesus. That plan went terribly. Oh, I got egg juice. I just showered. I got egg on me. All right, here we go. Let's try to make this work. Mm. Yeah. All right, there's another one. That one was clean. Next one. Let's get it clean. Here we go. Ah, oh, nice. Clean. And then last one. Mm. Mm. Zine says, for the flex, for the peck flexing, you earned it, bro. I love you, dude. Thank you. Okay, no shell. We get. We did good, boys. We did good. Four eggies. A one, a two, a tree. Four eggies. All right, now we got to do the milk. And then the whiskey. And then we'll put the whiskey on top. And then we're going hard. Here's the milky. Boop, boop, boop. I can't do that much because I got to have room for whiskey. I guess I can. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right, it all worked out. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be way harder. I think it's because that, that time I did the four time. All right, boys. Thank you so much to uh, attributing to one of the largest streams I've had in a long time. Viewership, vlogs, doesn't matter, revenue. You guys are goaded as hell. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Um, I don't deserve your love. Keep in mind, I only get like six to 900 viewers, which means I'm a bad streamer, like Asmon Gold said. Um, so I am thankful you guys choose to spend a few hours of your night with me. Um, and I love you. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. I post on there all the damn time, keeping everybody up to date. Uh, I think it's still on the Twitter thing. Let me look. You know what, Johan? Eat my ass. All right. Here's the whiskey, boys. Woodford. Woodford Reserve. Let's do that. All right. Here we go. Use a white monster in your fight milk at least once. It was gross. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't do it more than, more than once. All right. Here we go, boys. My Twitter's right there. Give it some lovey. Give it a little bit of that dancing love for your boy. Got a few more backers. Appreciate you guys. I love you. All right. It's that time again, boys. How is Lofty still arguing with people on my tweet? This dude. All right. It's time. One more time for Fight Milk. All right, boys. I love you. I appreciate you guys. Here. We go. I guess Cody doesn't like Johan. No, Johan's a bit. Yes, sir, Keith. Double fight milk on a Wednesday right before I get up and go to the Tim Pool Ranch. Here we go. What's up, Mackenzie? How you doing? Melissa, what's up? Buddy? Monkey Man, love you. Brian, love you. Tomorrow, Brian. Let's go. One more time. Love you. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for all your love and your your I appreciate you guys. You guys keep me going. I might be I think I'll be live Saturday. I think I come home Saturday, so I'll probably still do my show with Zia. And then I'll be live, of course, Monday and Wednesday. I fly out to Phoenix. So 
Get on it, doggone it. I love you. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are crazy. Four likes away from 666. Get on it, doggone it. Um, I'll see you on Legal Mindset Show. Give me a chat. Say Cam Raid. He's my boy. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for everything you do for me. I ain't. I don't deserve this shit, but damn, am I thankful. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. Streaming's great. It's a blessing, and I'm so damn thankful that I have a tight-knit group of people to hang out with uh, a couple times a week. Um, so get the hell on it, Doug. On. I'll see you guys over on League of Mindset stream. Hell yeah. Good night, everybody. I love you. Sweet kisses to your puppies.